We'll be live. Hello. <laughs> God, I miss that so much every time we do that. I'm like, I can't <laughs> wait another week for me to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> it's adorable. It's adorable. It's news hi, hi, time. Dee. Yes. Hi, D. And hi. Oh, look at this. Where's, I saw Sheikha. Yes. Sheikha is saying, Good evening, everyone. And then we are saying, I was supposed to be first, Sheikha. Oh, yeah. She beat you. She beat you to it. Sheikha is always first. And good morning, Sheikha. Hello. Guys, so we're going to be covering the news about religion and atheism and secularism from multiple different countries around the world because this is a very global uh, news show. Like This is the most global atheist channel that there is. And our audience are also from all around the world. So please let us know where you're watching from. I didn't even have to ask. And people are saying, Zayda, saying hello from Jordan. And Lucifer saying hello from Malaysia. Look, we're all over the place. This is amazing. This is great. Um, oh, my God. I don't like this one. Uh, Esmail is saying, hello, AR community from Khamenei's Khalifa. Uh, <laughs> Khalifa. Um, by the way, this depends in, if you're saying it in Persian or Arabic so to see if there's a T. So this this means that Esmail is watching from Iran. That's what this means, mm -hmm. Khamenei's Khalifa. Um, and then where else? Where else? Oh, we are from Pakistan and Simon, 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 Simon from Denmark, uh, Tanvir from India, Reza from Finland, Reza from, okay, are you guys paid by Soros? Not I wish. yet. <laughs> we are working on it, okay, um, and we, that would be nice, that would be nice. If anybody knows Soros, tell, please somebody, tell him. That we're interested. Shiha from <laughs> India. Oh, we have multiple people from Denmark. Look at this. Or nice. Denmark as is pr properly said here. Yeah. So from oh guys, we're finally back on Facebook as well. That's amazing. Um, where else? Yeah, we okay, were Bosnia. turbo blasted off of Facebook for it felt like ever years. <laughs> yeah. But we're Let's... back. They can't stop us. <laughs> <laughs> Kian from Belgium. Um, oh, yeah, we be live and global. Okay, guys, keep the comments where you're watching from coming. I might not be able to highlight all of them because we have to start with the news, but like keep telling other people. Oh, uh, yeah, Adam from Malaysia. But here's the thing Roman from Kazakhstan and from LinkedIn, both very unique for our channel. Like comments from LinkedIn is nice, and comments from Kazakhstan is also nice. That's a pretty, that's pretty unique. I like that. I like that we have audience on linkedin and in kazakhstan so what countries are we covering today susie oh my gosh well first of all we have so many juicy news stories to cover this week like so like guys make sure to stay tuned because there are some weeks where i'm like it's really hard to find enough for like to fill the show that a lot of them are just kind of like dry not that interesting or sometimes it's difficult because it's just all back to back to back awful news and i don't want to come to the show with stuff that's only straight depressing because like people aren't gonna want to engage right mm. but this week there were so many juicy news stories that I didn't even have enough like slots on the show for this week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's too much stuff to cover. So we're talking about things in India, the UK in Saudi Arabia, in France, Lebanon, the U S Afghanistan, Nigeria. Yep. Those, those are our countries this week. Okay, uh, Reza is no noticing that you have Farsi behind you, so she he's pointing that out, right? Um, also, guys, <laughs> before the show, I was going, Azadit Nafrush, Azadit Nafrush. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 you do that, you do that quite often. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so guys, remember that between the news items, we are going to be reading super chat, so if you can, please like support the channel with super chats so we have t nine or ten news items and every time uh, a news item finishes we're going to check if we have any super chats to read and uh, read and that, that would be very nice if we do have super chats so please help us out by giving us super chats Thank yes you so your support uh -huh. really does make a huge difference to keep our work going so if you 
feel it in your heart. If you are someone that likes to talk about atheism and secularism and it matters to you that this is an issue that's reflected around the world, please, please support the show. Yes. Okay. And Susie, sometimes I might be focusing on the live chat to make sure I highlight good comments and stuff. So if I miss something, don't blame me guys. Okay. I'm, I'm paying attention to so many different things. Okay. So okay. Don't it's worry. just funny to me because it's like so easy for me to multitask and do both. I and know. I Yours... didn't appreciate for a really long time how it's genuinely really hard for you. I got so mad at you. And then I'm like, because it's easy. I'm like, what's the problem? Anyways, okay. I, all I need, okay. Armin, is for you to pay attention to me while I read the actual description. Okay. Yes. Yes. Of course. Of course. I will, okay. I will take notes. <laughs> I will take note. Look at this. I will take notes. But again, I want to make sure that we don't miss some good comments as well in the live chat. Guys, please volunteer and help us out here. We need somebody to be at the backstage so that no, they can Armin, highlight I some good. No, I already talked to you about that. Oh yeah. Okay. 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 We'll we'll okay. We'll talk about that some more. Oh, we got our first super chat already. Uh, can we do that after the first segment? Oh, yes. Well, let's do that after the first segment. Okay. So, awesome. guys, we will save the super chats and then we will read them in between. Is the first news clappable? What country is this? This is in India. Uh, yeah. It sounds weird to clap for this. Clapping okay. for, uh, yeah, hitting children. So, let's. Oh, my, yeah. Yeah. No, this is. We're not going to. We're not going to clap for this one. We're not going to clap because this is. We said we don't do claps for. A murder, a torture, or molestation, or anything yeah. like that, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. this is kind of like torture. So yeah, well, I mean, it is. It I, is I, I wouldn't go that extreme, Mormon. That's okay. But anyway, so let's yeah. get into it. Here's a, oh, I, I almost clapped. All right, uh, next news. First news: shocking Indian teacher forces kids to slap Muslim student. And I already know the wild the live chat is going to go wild during this one. Okay. A horrifying incident in India's, uh, Mu oh my gosh, Muzaffarnagar district has sparked outrage nationwide after a video surfaced on social media showing a teacher by the name of Tripta Tyagi encouraging students to slap their seven-year-old Muslim classmate, Mohammed uh, Altamash. The video shows a visibly anxious Altamash standing before Tiagi and his classmates as they took turns slapping him, while Tiagi instructed them to do it properly and made anti-Muslim remarks. The incident led to widespread condemnation, including from opposition leader Rahul Gandhi, who accused Tiagi of, quote, sowing poison of discrimination in the minds of innocent children and blamed the ruling BJP party for stoking intolerance and violence against Muslim minorities in India. Atta, uh, Atamasha's parents, who noted the incident left their son severely traumatized, initially hesitated to file a complaint due to fears they would not be heard, but decided to take action after public outcry. Uh... I do, 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 do. Tiagi claimed the incident had nothing to do with the boy's religion. She asserted that Altamash's father had asked her to be strict towards him. And because she was physically disabled and couldn't get up, she asked the other students to discipline him. Yeah. Thank you, Armin. That was my reaction as well. <laughs> okay. Here's a quote. Quote, his father brought the child in and said to straighten him out. Now, because I can't get up, I thought I'd get one or two of the children to hit him, Tiagi said. This version of events was vehemently disputed by Muhammad Ir Irshad, Altamash's father, who stated that his son is good at his studies and expressed confusion as to why the teacher would treat him in such a manner. He suggested the incident seemed to be motivated by hate, a stark contrast to Tiagi's defense that her actions were merely a response to a request for strict discipline. So, okay, there's a lot to unpack here. One, I don't feel comfortable showing the video on YouTube, like even with the children being, like everything being blurred. Um, it's really horrible. And I want to provide a bit more context before we really dig into this, because there are a lot of conflicting narratives 
when it comes to this story. And I think it's fair that we talk about the conflicting pieces of information before we come to a conclusion. Okay. So what we do know is that there's this video and in the video you see the teacher, it's Yagi, like sitting in the corner at a desk. And then there's this boy standing at the front of the classroom. And then there's a classroom of all these other boys sitting on the ground And she asks three different boys to come up and hit the kid at the front of the classroom. And one of them slaps him across the face. The next one slaps him on the forehead. And the next one like slaps him on his back. And the kid is like wailing. And during this happening, there's a man that's filming this. And he's kind of like laughing a little bit. And then there's the teacher who is she's saying some stuff during this. And I, guys, full disclosure, I am limited by going by translations of what she said. So according to the translations that I have found in the reporting on this, she says stuff like, quote, uh, that all Muslim children should go and that adding Muslim children, Muslim children should be beat up. Well, the man in the background agreed with the teacher and said, you are correct. It ruins education. And there are other reports that say that she went on to say that when basically Muslim mothers, uh, mothers of Muslim students don't pay attention to their kids' studies, then their performance is ruined and stuff. So there are reports about there being repeated reference to his faith. Um... Now, there is disputes about what happened. So this woman is saying, (laughs) and like everything she says, everything that comes out of her mouth is kind of like a self-report to the level of how normalized child abuse is. Um, Because everything she says is basically like, oh, well, yeah, I did hit him. Of course I need to hit him. How else are we supposed to take, like, control these children? But I didn't hit him because of his religion. (laughs) That's essentially, like, every statement she makes. Um, And so the, 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 she, she has, like, zero qualms about the abuse. I, I, I think it's, her logic it's like well i'm disabled and i can't do it so i'll have the other kids do it is wild um and then there are i have read multiple reports about the response from the parents and there are multiple reports that say different things so i'm not completely sure what the truth is she claims that the father asked her to be tough on his son and this is how she did it So it wasn't communal. And then there are other reports of the parents saying that he's a good student. We didn't ask for this. And then this is motivated. And then when yesterday I was looking for the most recent updates on this case, and it seems that basically they've, the parent and the teachers have come to some form of, um, understanding where the parents have seemed to drop the idea that this is communally motivated and the teacher is just like, yeah, I'm sorry, that was wrong, blah, blah, blah. And that, that was, it seems to be, that was the understanding that this like came to at the end of the day. Um, so there's, she, she is very strident in saying that this is not because he was Muslim that this is just how they treat kids in this school. The school ended up getting shut down because of this incident. And at first I read that it was only the boy that had to be switched to a different school. And that was because of the choice of the parents. And then I was reading that according to many reports that the school itself just got shut down. Um, uh, at least temporarily while there was an investigation. So, Armin, with all of that additional information, tell me what you're thinking. Right. So first of all, we have to tell people that we are going based on reports from Indian news. Okay. So we are always a bit skeptical. It's in English. 
in English. So just just be mindful of that, right? So we're just going based on the best information that we have, right? Um, here, what we know is the what we see in the video for sure. Like this teacher is sitting there and telling other students to slap this other kid. Like that is that is that part is for sure. And yeah. It's, so what is verified <laughs> is that this child was beaten and degraded think, in front of his peers. <laughs> And what we know is that she knew this was being recorded and she still continued with it as like the level of self-awareness. She thought this is fine so much so that knowing that this is being recorded, she was like, yeah, what's the problem? I, like, oh, she had there no were so many statements she made where she's like, this is a minor issue. She's literally like, what are people even mad about? <laughs> like, oh, she, she, she seems surprised that this is an issue. Like, imagine how big of a deal hitting children is that a teacher does not understand like what are you guys on about like th that means that this is just a tip of an iceberg to me this suggests that this is just a tip of an iceberg how many children are being abused like this unbelievable um how sure are we that she said like in the video that oh yeah this is muslims like the comments about muslims was that part of what she said how sure are we about the translation of what she said because that is about the entire translation. I'm mm. not 100% positive. Although it, I am positive that she references it, that there are repeated references oh, to his to, faith background. To his religion. Okay. So, okay. So, and then later on, she says this has nothing to do with his religion, even though he constantly, she constantly refers to the boy's religion. I mean, not that the boy has any religion to the parents' religion, but, um, a lot of, so here's the thing. I am ten. You know, it's it's easy to say. You know what does it what does it matter? The kid's religion. Um, the kid is being abused. Uh, it doesn't matter what if it comes from a Muslim family or non-Muslim family. This is always this is an issue, right? Like we shouldn't care whether or not the teacher's intention was because the kid is Muslim or not. But I, as that sounds very nice to say, that sounds like something. Uh, that shows that you're a humanist, that you don't you you care for the child regardless of the background. But there's a reason why we have hate crimes, because if the re if the reason, as disgusting as this is, if the reason is the child's religion or background, you know, religious background, then this is a bigger problem. This is a form of hate that is more difficult to get rid of. So, for example, if you want to understand, if somebody uh, punches somebody in the face because you owe them money and you're not paying them back, that is horrible. That is not how you're supposed to deal with that situation. But if you punch them in the face because they're black, that is a bigger issue. That is a form of hatred in society that is much harder to resolve and much easier to spread and much easier to cause bigger problems than just a physical. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So if, if this is because the kid is Muslim, then we're talking about a growing like, amount of hatred in India that is going to have a lot more significant consequences than just a teach a bad teacher or many bad teachers. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and is it is the teacher ever going to be a teacher again? Like, is she? Are, are we? Can we say that she's going to lose her job forever? No, as a teacher, no. Damn. She's facing charges, but I have not read a single report that said that she's not going to be a teacher. Not a single one. She came forward and apologized. At first, at first, she wasn't apologizing. She had no issue, and then more recently, it came out that she apologized. Okay. Um, um, so if, uh, look, some people in the live chat were asking us not to show the video. Okay. Well, here's the thing. We can't show the video because it would be against YouTube's policies. This is physical abuse and YouTube does not let us uh, show you that. But what we can show you is the comments that people left uh, that deselected for us. Um, this person is saying shameful and sickening. No child is no child anywhere should be subjected to such cruelty. The teacher should be fired and face the law 
this is child abuse. Yeah, she should actually go to jail for it. I, I might. I think she should go to jail for this. No, is that too much? Um, uh, I, I don't know what the stand. You, what you mean? What, what it should be in an ideal world, or what is according yes. to the Indian Penal Code? Mm. No, what should, but what, what, what I don't know, I, I don't know Indian penal code. I just think what should happen, like what the ideal situation would be that not only she should never be able to be a teacher again, I think this requires jail time. Yeah. Yeah. Because if someone um, did that in America, I'd be like, yeah, send that person to jail. So that should be my standard in other places. Yeah. And then somebody else is saying, teacher must be dismissed from service immediately. Yes, mostly good takes. Uh, somebody is saying, why was it deleted so fast? Because it was meant to grab attention uh, for men's hate against PM. Okay, my God, why are Indian nationalists so cringe? God damn it, there are better ways to defend India than every time you hear a news that it, that you think is embarrassing. You know what? You are more embarrassing. Okay, let me just read this. Why was it deleted so fast? Because it was meant to grab attention, foment hate against uh, Prime Minister Modi in India and in enrage international against India. Video was deleted very fast, so it's create so its creator. But it's well, I don't know it's a different kind of it's its creators will not be traced. The cabal is busy making new videos on victimhood. Okay, so this is the level of lunacy that we're dealing with among some Indian nationalists, and I think they don't understand that what their defense is actually more embarrassing than these videos because right every country has problems. Uh, you are. You know, you're you, you're going to look better if you actually say, yeah, yeah, this is a, we have a problem here. We need to deal with it. Like, this is not a good defense. What? What did you? What are you laughing? I'm laughing at you saying that they're more cringe than the actual. Yeah, yeah. Like you're trying to make India look good by denying news all the time, but you're actually making it worse because if people look at the news, they're like, oh my god, there's a problem in India, and they look at your comment and like, okay. We have a bigger problem in India. Like the problem is bigger because we have some insane loony. Okay, I'm, some insane people. Okay, again, ha hashtag not all Indians, not all Hindus. Okay, we're talking about specifically these idiots who think that they're helping India, but the image of India is more important to them than solving actual problems of India. Okay. India is a great country and it will continue to progress, but not because of your defense. You're holding it back. You're making the progress slower. If you love your country, you will acknowledge the problems that the country has and try to make it better. Anyways, we have some super chats that we need to address. Do you? Should we go to the super chat? Um. Yeah. Uh. So I would just like to say before we wrap up that I know that this story in particular is like very heated and there's a lot of controversy and conflicting stories. So I did my best to, with information available, to talk about it and with all sides presented um, because that's important to me. Um, so the first super chat that I want to read is because it's most directly related to um, what we were just discussing. And Newman is basically talking about how normalized uh, child abuse is in India. He said, that's a common thing in India. I've seen it. And other people are just talking about like, oh, yeah, this isn't like a communal thing. Like everyone gets beaten, blah, blah, blah. That's unacceptable. <laughs> that's unacceptable. It shouldn't be that way. <laughs> At the end of the day, no matter what, this behavior is unacceptable. Um, mm. It's so harmful to children. There's so many studies on this. It shouldn't be a question. It shouldn't be excused. It shouldn't be justified and rationalized. It's they're on so many different levels. One of, actually, I'm not going to go on a rant about a psychology thing, but guys, come on, that's the moral of the story. Um. Okay, well, first of all, thank you everyone that gave us all these super chats. This is amazing. Wait, wait, so wait. let's dig into two, them. Before we get, there's two more comments that I wanted to read. Hmm. Um, for, so read this one first. Wiley Coyote is saying, don't need validation about India from you, Armin. Okay. 
That is not true, okay? India is nothing with my validation, okay? India gets this. <laughs> India needs this. You know, all the politicians in India are contacting me, begging me. They're on their knees asking me to validate India because they know they are nothing. They are nothing. They are completely insignificant, okay? I'm, I'm trying to work on China as well, but so far, India, uh, the, all the politicians in India are constantly messaging me and begging me for some level of validation, just a little bit. Um, Darko is saying they are making it about India, though, idiots. Um, yeah, exactly. Imagine how disgusting your attitude has to be um, that you see a child being abused and your thought is not, okay, poor child, this person needs help. How can we solve this? Your first view is like, oh my God, India embarrassed. Your priorities are not right. You're not your priorities are not in the right place. Okay. So yeah, let's do the super chats. Um, okay, so first super chat is from Prosh. Thank you. Saying, what is your opinion of Israel and Palestine? Always thought the Palestinians are descended. Ooh. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my god, Bless I'm so you. sorry. Thank you. Um, always thought that Palestinians are descendants of the original biblical Jews. Do you agree? What? What is your opinion on Israel Palestine? Always thought that Palestinians are descendants of the original biblical Jews. Do you agree? Where no. are you getting that information? <laughs> what? Uh, okay. Okay. Well, don't laugh at our super chats, Susie. <laughs> so, no, no, that's not true. That is not the case. Um, and also the Israel-Palestine issue should not be uh, at all connected to where people are descended from. Like that's, that should, that should, part of the problem with the issue of Israel-Palestine is people are constantly talking about lineage and who and mm -hmm. race and mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. if you want the, you know, if you want an Israel-Palestine issue to resolve faster, take heritage, ethnicity and religion out of it. I know it's impossible to do that, but that's, Unfortunately, that's why this problem is constant continue to persist. Yeah, that's a fantastic yeah. point, Armin. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I like it when you say that. Um, oh, okay. So <laughs> uh Druza is celebrating his his or her one month Drusilla, sorry, Drusilla one month membership saying I was in the Discord, there was no text channels. There's no text channels on Discord? I think we should have some. This comment makes no sense to me. Is Discord not entirely text channels? Is that literally, is that not literally what the platform is? No, we have voice channels and text channels. Oh, okay. Our Discord yeah. is like mostly text channels. Text channel. Yes, yes. We'll I don't understand. Into okay, okay, yeah. we'll, okay we'll, check, we'll check it out. Okay, you want to read this one? Um, Gaijin American, thank you, Gaijin, is saying, Mufti Arman, he's asking for your opinion, sir. Is it halal of me to origami a paper, a page of the Quran into the Prophet Muhammad? <laughs> turmoil be upon him writing the Barak. So would it be halal yeah. to use a page of the Quran to make a little Prophet Muhammad writing the no. Barak? Brock. No, it would not be home. It's be not it. permissible. No, okay. No, it's not permissible. Yes, but oh, thank okay, you for okay. the super chat. Thank you for that clarifying. That was an easy question. Move the yes. I'm here. We to appreciate help. your ruling, <laughs> good sir. Um, uh, Gage American is also saying, uh, Aboriginal Maori black and brown kids are disproportionately disciplined in their respective nations. Oh, basically speaking to what we were talking about, like discipline towards minority children. That oh, that's okay. that's the tie-in. Um, David the Goliath gave a ten year Canadian dollar super chat. Thank you, David. Saying, do you think post nineteen sixty five immigrants to the United States have the right to criticize white Americans for Native American genocide and slavery, even though they? also live on stolen native land is it hypocritical uh this they is a huge diversion no. okay here i just have a general it's attitude. okay no no okay just just to be clear the super chats between the shows it's okay for it to be diversion, diversion. yeah no so, i'm just like yeah. making it clear to other people listening right um okay 
I I have the general opinion that I hate it when people say that you're not allowed to talk about something, you're not allowed to criticize something because of X Y Z factor about how who you are or how you came to any country. I think it's really stupid to be like, oh no, you're not allowed to talk about that because of something you can't control. Right. You know, I hate. I really, I really hate that attitude. It shuts down critical thought. So yeah, who cares? They, 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 they are benefiting from increased civil liberties. That's awesome. 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 I'm super happy that they didn't experience some of the worst histories and periods in legislation of our country, right? They should feel free to criticize anything they want. It's their country too. Yeah. I mean, I think there's two questions being asked here. And I think one of the problems is that they're different and people can't recognize that they're different. One of them is, do they have the right? The other one is, is it hypocritical? Okay. And they, whether they have the right, of course they have the right. That's a free speech issue. Okay. Um, is it hypocritical? No, it's not hypocritical because they are not the ones who stole the land. <laughs> so it's their answer. Like, were they involved in stealing the land? So it's not even, so yes, they have the right. And it's not even hypocritical unless they were somehow themselves involved, personally involved in stealing their land. This is collectivist attitude, blaming people today for the crimes of their ancestors, right? So does that make sense? All right. GJ, GJ, good to see you back. It's been a while. GJ gave us a super chat saying hi from the Netherlands. I won't be hanging around because I am a severe chronic pain sufferer, but here's a super chat to celebrate Max Verstappen's new world record winning 10 consecutive F1 GPs. Okay, well, congratulations to this guy. I don't know who he is or what he did, but shouts out to him. I don't know, but (laughs) I have no idea, but amazing job. Congratulations. (laughs) Yummy. Yeah. Um, Another super chat from GJ saying, oh, and India deserves plenty of props as the world's biggest successful democracy. Yes. Wait, uh, (laughs) India deserves plenty of... Yeah, well, yes, of course, of course, that's true. That's true. I agree with that. And also for heading... I mean, I when it comes to India, the thing that makes me the most optimistic is its people power, the Mm. young generation, the entrepreneurship of the young generation and also the economic giant that it is and the superpower that it's going to become. So mm-hmm. those are the things mm-hmm. I celebrate about it. Yeah. Yes, but thank you, GJ. Um, um, yeah. Animation yeah. is saying, don't trust Indian media. A lot of them deliberately create confusion to brush things under the rug. The things that I dislike the most about Indian media is that when there's an incident but that happens between two different like ethno-religious groups, it'll just say Good that sorry. it happened and then like and so and so from another religious group it, it they refuse to actually be truthful and specific about what happened i think in right. an effort to try to like you know the charitable version is they say that to not try to create communal tensions or whatever but i think it just creates more confusion because they're trying to yes. like not be transparent about what actually happened or what dynamics were at play it's really frustrating um <laughs> the super chat by occasion speaking of um indian politicians that uh, uh need your validation armin gaijin yes. american is saying that the jade emperor himself is also begging for your begging. validation that's pretty powerful how do you feel about that that is a, that is significant okay not as significant as indian politicians ask begging for my validation but still pretty good still good and also billy i think is like uh, kind of upset about that Oops. asking me specifically for which politicians are begging for my validation in india um he's asking could you give me the list of the politicians well really it's all of them every all single of one of them all of them yes exactly so the answer is yes um, <laughs> <laughs> oh also newman is clarifying to drusilla I think he or she has not verified yet. That's why they're not saying the chat. Yeah, so. I know that there are a lot of people in our live chat right now who are active on our Discord. So can you please like give better instructions to Drusilla about how to help how to help them out there? Because I would love to have, you know, them joining, being yes. active on our Discord. Guys, by the way, link to our Discord 
in the description below. Make sure to join. Yes. Um, Make it active. Make it more I, active. Yes. I. Uh, I, I, I barely understand how Discord works. So someone give them better instructions. Yeah. Um, and oh. Balakrishnan just gave us a mini super chat with with, uh, we got with no comment. Thank you, Bala. Guys, we got so many super chats today. Thank you so much for being so generous. We appreciate that. So yeah, if you keep bringing the super chats in, we will read the super chats between the news items. So thank you so much for that. That's what, that was very nice. Um, also, SFL is saying people need to share this channel. Yes, please, please, please tell your friends and family and your enemies, especially your enemies, to that this is a great channel. Um, and also, you highlighted this one. Oh, this is just a sweet comment by Abijano, just saying obligatory weekly comment. You both look cute as always. Oh, thank you. That's very thank sweet. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so can we clap for the next news? This is wild. So we're going to clap for it. Okay. Ooh. Next news. Next news. UK imam's shocking lecture on stoning women to death sparks outrage. Coming at you from the heart of the United Kingdom. A UK imam, Sheikh uh, Zakula uh, Salim of the Green Lane Masjid in Birmingham, has caused a stir and prompted an official investigation after a video surfaced on social media of him detailing the process of stoning a woman to death. Salim was seen instructing an audience to bury a woman up to their waists before stoning them in order to protect their modesty. As he explained, according to the Sharia, when a woman, when it comes to women, there must be a hole dug in the earth, in the ground, and she must be covered up to half of the body. While some on while some online debated whether Salim was merely describing the practice or actively endorsing it, another segment left um, little room for interpretation as Salim clarified that stoning or lashing is the designated punishment for zina or you know, illicit, non-permissible sexual relationships within Islam, depending on whether the individuals involved are married or unmarried. This incident has drawn further scrutiny to the Green Lane Masjid, which has a history of hosting speakers with controversial views on women, such as Abu Usman, who described women as intellectually deficient. Despite this background, the mosque ha has... Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Despite this background, the mosque was recently awarded 2.2 million pounds from the UK government's youth investment fund to expand its youth services. However, following the circulation of the video and a letter from the National Secular Society expressing concern over the mosque's history, the government has paused the funding and in initiated an investigation into the Green Lane Masjid. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Armin, if you scroll within our uh, write up of this, I believe we included the video and um, we can uh, watch it. We, we can watch some of the this clips. One? This one? Yes. Okay, give me a second. Uh -huh. Let me actually watch it on Twitter. Not X, but Twitter. Okay. I've refused to call it X. Yes. This is this is so offensive. <laughs> okay, okay. So this goes to the beginning. Her that she is punished and she is stoned to death. And according to the Sharia again. When it's okay, YouTube, we do not disagree with these at all. This is disgusting commentary. We are just highlighting a disgusting commentary as a way to show people disgusting commentary. Please understand that we disagree with everything that is being said here, okay? And according to the Sharia, again, when it comes to women, they must be there must be a, there must be a hole dug in the in the in the earth in the in the ground and she must be covered up to the half of the body so that her setter does not uh, uh, appear her that she is punished and she is stoned to death 
Oh, that was it? That was a short one. Hey? And there might be a second one um, in this article. So, Keep scrolling down. So, no, that, I think that's good enough. So basically, he's saying that you have to be buried to, uh, deep into the ground up to here. I thought my, my, the version that we were told is different. Uh, we were told that women have to be buried till here in the ground and men up to here. So men have a better chance of getting out. Oh, God. Yeah. You, That's were, what you I were taught, taught this in school? No, 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 no. But basically, we were taught, told this in the mosque by the religious leader or something. In, oh, in, my God. Well, in school. Okay, yeah. Well, in school, yes, but not in the classroom. In the mosque. Mm -hmm part of the school we were told that somebody mm -hmm. told it. it was not part of the curriculum but yes so wow. men have a higher chance of getting out and also it's more modest because you know if the woman if they're if they're all the way up here right if you're stoning them you know their clothing might come off and you might see something arousing in the so midst of be, participating in, in, the of in group stone. murder <laughs> yeah yeah, so so this is what we can be. That's... This is what we should be concerned about when initiating a communal murder. <laughs> oh my god! Right, right. So when you're throwing stones at this lady to kill her, you might like see her body and get turned on, and that that would be a problem. That would be a problem. So bury her all the way up to here, so you make sure you don't see anything. I don't know how anybody would be turned on, like in the middle of seeing this lady's like blood and her you know, eyes coming out and everything. And you see her all of a sudden you get turned on by that. Like, I don't know what kind of a person you have to be to feel something like that in the middle of all of that. But if you are one of those people, don't worry. Islam has you covered by having her covered all the way up to the neck. Have you ever seen videos so, of a stoning? Yes. It's horrifying. It is horrying. It is. It's horrible. My 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 friends, my classmate's father was stoned to death. What? Yes. The person that sat next to me in classroom in Shiraz in Shahid Shahid Dasgheb Tisushan High School, um, his father was stoned to death. Why? He was a doctor, and he was an and how do you say that? Anesthesiologist. And say that again. Anesthesiologist. Yes. Um, he would put. Oh, actually, I don't. No, was he woman's issue? No, okay. I think he was a doctor for women's. No, no, no. He was a doctor for giving birth and stuff like that. Yes. Oh, so but he was an OBGYN. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah. So he, this is what happened. He would put his patients on um in a coma like under sleep like with you know and then he would have his way with them <gasps> and he made yes so the reason why he was our family knew knew his family because my father is a doctor and his father was a doctor so doctors usually know each other and stuff so but that's what he did like he would put patients on to, on to sleep and just have his way with them and um, he got he made a couple of them pregnant apparently, and that's how he got caught. And that's why he got stoning to death. Oh my god. Yeah. As bad as that crime is, though, I don't think anybody should deserves like that is that is vile, and obviously that person should be punished for what they did, but I don't think you should stone anybody to death, even for even for that. <laughs> Oh my god, I need a moment. <laughs> yeah. But oh you agree god. with me, right? Even the, you agree with me that even as bad as that is, like nobody should be stoned to death, even for that. Yeah. I just want to clarify that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That took me oh, off an you... emotional roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, returning to the United Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, like so, the yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I think is important to mention, because we do try to be oh. as objective as possible here at Atheist Republic, is um, so everyone, I want you to say thank you to our lovely editor, D, 
who is here as a mod in the live chat. Everyone say thank you, Dee, because when Dee was doing research for editing this news, she showed me this comment that she found on Reddit. This one? And no, 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 it's not included in our write-up. And basically, oh. there is someone on Reddit claiming that they saw the entire video of this lecture and that these clips have been taken out of context. Mm -hmm. So, however, me and Dee were not able to go find the full video to be able to verify whether what this person is claiming is true. But this person is basically claiming that these clips that have gone viral were taken out of context and that he was talking about a story from the time of the prophet of a woman who committed adultery and was begging the prophet Muhammad to kill her for it. And the prophet refused because she was pregnant. And then he refused because she needed to sustain the baby. And then when the baby was old enough to be self-sufficient, she went to the prophet again and begged him to punish her for her sins to repent. Mm -hmm. And he finally did it and was basically saying that the, that the sincerity of her repentance was enough to like purify like the whole community because of how sincere she was, even though they did end up punishing her in this way for this kind of thing. So in the context of this lecture, he goes on to, con according to this person, speak about honor killings and condemn them heavily, saying that, quote, or that honor killings are an insult to Islam in Muslim countries and should not happen because the people doing the honor killings are not prophets or Islamic rulers and therefore do not yep. have the right to install that kind of a punishment. And... So these clips of him talking about the stoning are in the context, allegedly, of a lecture talking about this story and explaining what the Sharia and ruling on these types of punishment are. So Armin, let's just hypothetically say that what this person's saying about the entire lecture is true. Right. What, what do you think about it in that case? I've heard that often, which actually confirms how disgusting Islam is, right? Because... And you hear that from some, you know, um, on some Islamic Dava channels as well, right? So um, you have these very, very, very disgusting rulings in Islam. And the defense of it is like, listen, nobody could just go out and do this by themselves. There needs to be Islamic judges um, doing a ruling and then you could do it. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, great. So this makes it all fine then. We thought that stoning somebody to death means that some random people could just go and stone somebody to death. But now that we know that in, we need to have a shura, a council, or like a ju judges commanding you to stone somebody to death for zina, for adultery, now that makes it all okay. Thank you for correcting us. But basically, they're confirming with their defense of stoning people to death, they're confirming that stoning people to death is part of Islam. So they think they're defending it. But with their defense, um, they are actually making it worse because now they are showing us that this is part of Islam. So, for example, we have uh, child mar marriage or wife beating in Islam. And the people who want to defend Islam, they say, like, no, listen. You, you can't just beat your wife all the time at any time. There are certain conditions that you have to meet before you could hit your wife. And they think that def they're defending it. They're like, okay, glad to know that there are conditions for wife beating. But so just to be clear, we do have wife beating. They're like, yes, but you have to do it under certain conditions. So this is exactly what's happening here. You have stoning to death in Islam. They think they're defending it by saying that certain conditions to be uh, need to be met for you to be able to do that. But at the end of the day, they are confirming that this is part of Islamic teaching. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah, it's um this this mosque, this Green Lane Masjid in Birmingham, seems to have a very problematic history. They have a long and documented history of having speakers that are explicitly anti-Semitic. 
there are speakers that talk very openly about how women need to be completely compliant and available to their husbands, uh, talking about their deficient capacity. And there was a recent speaker um, who was going on basically criticizing people for campaigning for women's rights in Iran, <laughs> basically saying like that people are just like, um, that Islam came and freed women properly. And if we just practice Islam correctly, then women will be free. Um, and, uh, then there was this incident and then there were also incidents of speakers coming and saying very vehemently homophobic stuff. And so this mosque was due to receive 2.2 million pounds of taxpayer money, public funds for a youth investment fund. And because this video started circulating, it is now under review. And the defense of the masjid is that they're like, oh, well, this money would have been going to a center that's available for all people of all faiths and it would have been open to the community at large in an area where there's gang crime and we need to like bring people together and um you know it was supposed to have a food kitchen and all this stuff it they said none of the imams who preached in the mosque would have been involved in the youth center that we were going to set up um However, if there was any possibility of them doing any sort of dawah or preaching in this youth center, which would be connected to the masjid, then I'm like, no, this is completely unacceptable. You don't get $2.2 million. So are you sure? Dollars or pounds? Excuse me, pounds. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, so now that's under review because of this. 2.2, oh my God. Okay, first of all, the, the, this money that is going to them... When they are, the if $2.2 million from the government should be spent on government agents that do this kind of work, not the goddamn mosques, because they are churches and mosques, they use this money to advertise their religion more than the thing that they say they're going to do. Like, I've seen Christians going out and helping the homeless. I've, I've worked with them just to observe what they're doing. They make you accept Jesus before they give you the goddamn sandwich, right? They're like, they go with sandwiches to homeless people. I'm like, do you accept Jesus? And they're like, I mean, the understanding is, even if they don't say it, like you kind of have to say some certain nice things about Jesus before you get the goddamn sandwich. So it's disgusting. I mean, even if you don't say, they take you to the church and they sing Jesus' song before when they help you. So they're trying to put you in an environment like with the money that they're getting to support these homeless people, they're kind of advertising their religion at the same time. This is what this is as well. Like you go find problems in the neighborhood and you are mostly advertising Islam than just like, than helping reduce gang violence because that money would have been used more efficiently if the government was spending that same money on experts, like people who have, who are not getting their money because they have, religious background or religious teaching but people who are ex specifically based on merit based on having specific expertise on reducing gang violence that would have been money better spent but why are they why were they getting even without this news why are they getting money from the government is it, doesn't that violate secularism when mosques are receiving money from taxpayer money like, well, I mean, I don't know what the situation or construction is in the in the United Kingdom, but I mean, it's like really common in the United States for faith based organizations to be able to get grants from the government, depending on the kind of services that they provide. OK, guys, we need grant writers ourselves at Atheist Republic. So so that like, look, these people are getting two point two million dollars. We can't get five thousand dollars. We can't get uh, pounds. Yes, we can't get like. We can't get a fraction. Guys, we need grant writers to get money because we would do better with this. Atheist Republic could do so much better work with that sort of money than these. The, look at them. They're, they're advocating for stoning people and they're getting... The, okay, I mean, I'm glad they're not going to get that money anymore. But even if they, they well, didn't they say this... they still could. They're under investigation. It hasn't been determined right. yet. Okay. Oh, guys, this is insane. Okay, we... Please help us write better grants or i mean we write good grants because Susie could use your help we need a team she's busy um 
and that will like really untie our hands if we could get some grant money. Atheist Republic is a 501c in the United States, so we could apply for grants like this. So if you want to help us write grants to be able to take advantage of these opportunities, link is in the description. You could become a volunteer, and from the volunteer positions, one position is grant writer, grant researcher and writer, right? And then you could join Susanna if you on our team in coming up with opportunities for grants and writing, uh, researching grant opportunities, writing, filling out grant forms and stuff so that we could do a lot of work. And, oh, if we ever succeed, then we're going to let you know, you know, that, that what are we going to using all that money and stuff for probably yeah so yeah i i do you susie i think we could do a lot of great work if we had 2.2 million dollars million <laughs> dollars we would go we would probably start like a legal team to help um atheist refugees i would always i always wanted us to be able to have something like that oh atheist God, refugees Atheist refugees, like people, athe ex-Muslims who are leaving Islamic countries, and they need support. They need legal support for their immigration stuff, for their for their refugee case. We will we will start that. We will that would be the most amazing thing we could do. Yeah. Okay. Please help us out. Become a become a volunteer. Link in the description. Um. All right. Wow. We got we got a ton of super chats. You amazing. guys are amazing. Yeah. Uh, before we read the super chats, some uh, Wicar was saying, "Wish I could donate to this community, but I live in a damn darn country." Guys, if you cannot donate either because of where you are or because you're not financially secure, first of all, if you're not financially secure, please do not donate. Neither don't donate to us or to anybody else. Don't donate. Take care of yourself before you take care of other people. Right? But here's the thing. I have a secret. There's a way that you could support us without spending any money. There's a secret thing. There's a there's a loophole in the system, and it's called a like a like button. Okay, and that's you know I'm just letting you all, you all know. Okay, not many people know about this, but you could like the show, and that was that doesn't cost you anything. And some for some reason it supports us. So just like the show, and if you want to support us even more, once the show is over, you could leave a comment. I've heard. That doesn't cost you anything either. I've heard that's free. And you could do that without spending anything, and it will help the channel. So please like and leave a comment after the show is over. So thank you for that. And thank you for wanting to help us, Vicar. That's very nice. Okay. Um, okay. So let's read the Super Chats. Oh, we just got another one as well. <laughs> New one <sighs> is saying, guys, no blasphemy. It's X videos now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a Twitter. It's not a video on Twitter now. Now it's X videos. No, this is, I refuse. This is, this is an adult content joke for those who don't get it. <laughs> yes. Um, if you watch that disgusting content, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what X videos is. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> David the Goliath, thank you for another super chat saying, What does Armin think of Zoroastrianism? Why did Zoroastrian, Zoroastrians fail to protect their religion, unlike Jews and Hindus? They are remnants of pre-Islamic Iran. Well, what do you mean by fail to protect their religion? There still are Zoroastrians mm. till this day. Like I know some. Yeah, Not but they're like, like small. But yeah. Um. Yeah, but they're very very small. Like they they were they were a religion of an empire. Uh, they were uh, they were a religion of a superpower. I mean, Judaism is was never a religion of a superpower. But Zoroastrianism was a religion of the superpower. I mean, to be fair, um, pre-Christian Roman religion was also a religion of a superpower, and you don't see them around anymore. So they failed to they they failed more spectacular. Like you don't see anything of Roman pre-Christian Roman religion. Zoroastrianism, at least, there's some of it going around. How? Um, I mean, it's just I a natural. Heard, I don't know yeah. if this is correct. That in the Zoroastrian faith, the traditional Zoroastrian faith, that if you marry outside of the faith and you yourself are literally no longer considered Zoroastrian, like Yazidis, like if oh, Yazidi marries a young Yazidi, they are officially like excommunicated. So if that's the case, because again, I, I'm not 100% positive how popular that practice is. If that is the case, that's not a really good way for a meme to survive. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, people have to understand that Islam, Christianity, and Hinduism, and Judaism is not that big either. It's just, um, it's a very tiny religion right now. It's mostly Islam, Christianity, and Hinduism. Hinduism is just big because India has a big major population. But you have to understand that Islam and Christianity are very unique memes that have been, that are very uniquely, uh, have a, seemingly been designed to spread so if you're judging these others Zoroastrianism, ancient greek ancient roman ancient egyptian religions based on the standards of what christianity and islam have cap have been capable to accomplish it's not a fair comparison these are memes these are viruses that are like so uh, uniquely um viral right so that's what, and also I Zoroastrianism is disgusting, by the way. Just to just to answer the first part of your question. Oh yeah, it's. It, I would say that Zoroastrianism is more anti-woman than Islam. Oh my God. Yes, yes. If you go study their scripture, is is yeah. absolutely disgusting, right? Um. Also, they hate cats. Did you know that? Did you know that Zoroastrianism? No. Okay, so as Islam is anti dog, Zoroastrianism is anti cat, and they love dogs. Zoroastrianism loves dogs. So this is very interesting because in is Islam love cats. We have literally the one of the main hadith writer, writers is called Abu Huraira, like the father of cats. He loves the, right? the cat daddy. The cat daddy. The ca <laughs> cat daddy. In Islam, we have the cat daddy being a major hadith writer. <laughs> And they hate, and it's funny because the same guy who was the cat daddy wrote a lot of the scripture, a lot of the hadith against dogs, right? So Islam is anti dog, pro cat, and Zoroastrianism is pro dog, very much pro dog, apparently, and anti cat and anti turtles. Zoroastrianism what did the hates turtles. turtles. Do? <laughs> I don't know, but they're demonic apparently, according to Zoroastrianism. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yo, I love the idea of a really slow demon coming to attack you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm okay with okay. being anti cat. I'm not going to lie. Oh, hey, no, don't say that. Cats will literally, lost... if you if you die within an, like an apartment no. or whatever and you have cats, your cats will start eating you within an hour of your death. They waste no time straight up eating your face. I know, but going, okay, but... eating your whole face and then going inside your chest cavity. They have no problem okay. doing it okay, within yeah, less than 24 hours. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> okay, but it's their nature. Don't upset. It's okay. We just lost half, half our audience, Susie. Do you understand they got that? They no but... love for you. They don't really love you. They don't really <laughs> protect you. Dogs. It's yeah. okay. We can love the cats even if they don't love us in return, okay? Because it's their nature, okay? It's, a, it's, their, it's their who they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys we love cats here i love cats here even though i have dogs we have love for cats here please don't unsubscribe thank you very much <laughs> yeah. um okay, okay let's go to the next right. super chat from gaijin american i believe gaijin is referring to the stoning discussion we were having earlier uh he's saying gore and vor are both fetishes it's giving Chinese uh, Communist Party of China struggle sessions. I wonder how many of these punishments are just unresolved kinks in disguise. Ew, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's meant to be fear, uh, scare tactics. I think that's mostly how it's. I think they're mostly scare tactics. If I had to guess, I mean, but people okay. use a lot of these punishments as their own fetishes, though. Not like stoning, but the yeah. flogging, mm. including on the feet. That's a super common one yeah yeah um okay we got another super chat from sid dave thank you saying why did iran fall so easily to arab invaders iran was a major power must have been embarrassing for iranians i don't really like that framing uh when did iran become muslim majority armin you would know much more about this than me 
Okay, I will get, uh, answer quickly. Uh, first of all, uh, the the current the standard narrative was that the the Sassanid Empire, which is was Iran, and the Byzantine Empire, which was Eastern Rome, um, they were fighting for ages with each other. So that depleted a lot of their resources, both of them. So when the when the Arab uh, invasion was supposedly have had happened, um, and also there was a plague that was spreading, both that was destroying basically both Iranians and Roman cities, and the Arabs, being nomads, were immune to that because they did not live in major cities. So when the Arabs, so the resources of the Iranian Empire and the Roman Empire was depleted. And the thing is that the Arabs relied on the money from um, on money from Persian Empire and the uh, Roman Empire to do to work. So they were proxies. So the Roman Empire hired a lot of Arab tribes to attack the Iranian Empire, and the Iranian Empire hired a whole bunch of Arab tribes to attack the Roman Empire because they were doing proxy battles because they were so tired of the superpowers going directly at each other themselves, right? Because that was very costly. And when they were, the resources was depleted enough that they couldn't pay these Arab tribes anymore. The Arab tribes were like, well, we have an industry of war and they're not paying us anymore. So they're like, okay, let's raid cities now. And when they started raiding cities, they were like, oh my God, this is so easy because these empires could not defend themselves like they used to. So the Roman empire lost a lot of cities to Arabs as well. And the Persian Empire lost the entirety of the Persian. And the, the Arabs probably were very surprised of how easy this is to go take one city after the other because these were these were empires. But they were they lost all their a lot of their money to plague and constant war, and that's why it became so easy. Um, so that was a standard narrative. However, we have now newer, like more, more scholars are studying these. They're revisiting all the evidence archaeological evidence and all these other evidence and we have now a new understanding of what actually happened so this was the standard what i told you was a standard narrative for many many years but let me just go quickly the new narrative is that this was not even an invasion this was an internal uprising so the arabs that we're saying that they out attacked the persian empire from outside apparently there was never an invasion from outside they were part of they were these were part of the iran the Sassanid empire this was an internal uprising against the Sassanid Empire. So this whole narrative of Arabs being not part of the Sassanid Empire and the Persians being part of the Sassanid Empire, these black and white thinking is is seems to be a, um, an inaccurate description of what was going on. These were within the borders of the empire, and there was an internal... Just like the uh, Jews did not attack the... What is it called? Um, the Canaanites... They, because they say the, the narrative of the story for the biblical story is that Jewish people came out of Egypt and they attacked the Canaanites and they took their land. And now we understand that this was not how it went down. The Jews did not come from Egypt. They were there in Israel and they had an uprising against the Canaanites and took them down. It seems like we have a similar thing happening in the Persian Empire. These Arabs had an internal uprising and they took the empire down. It was not a foreign attack. So there you go. Interesting. Yes. Um. Okay. Numan gave a super chat saying, Susie, how do you manage all of this? <laughs> Thanks for it. Um, that's a good question. And it's something that I have to actively work on uh, because I used to be a lot. I, I didn't used to be so good at managing everything that I have to manage for AR as well as my own life and my own income and taking care of myself, all that stuff. Uh, but you know, we, we, we grow every day. <laughs> I'm a lot better at it than I used to be. That's for sure. Well, let me say that guys, we don't pay Susie at Atheist Republic for all the work that she does. Okay. Because we can't afford her, even though she is worth so much, her time is worth so much. She's giving it to Atheist Republic for free, and that is not okay, and that is not sustainable because Susie has a lot of other things to do as well. So we need to get Atheist Republic to a place where we could start paying Susie. So please help us out by donating, by Super Chats, by becoming a YouTube member. We have a PayPal link in the description, 
Um, so please try to get us there to a point where we could actually start paying Susie. That would be nice. Thank you very much. Um, then we have another super chat <laughs> by hear that. And he's referring to, uh, the, the practice of, you know, like religious charity, giving social services, being like, yes, I accept Jesus. Now give me the goddamn sandwich. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that really is how exactly. it is across the world, and I mean this has been repeated throughout history for centuries. Um, Kelvin Cam gave us a super sticker. Thank you, Kelvin. And uh, Sid Dave gave us another super chat. Thank you, Sid. Saying, "Do you have any right wing beliefs? Is there anything you ever regret saying or supporting since starting atheist activism?" I think for me, um, there are. The only, the main things that I regret would be like when there were disputes among activists, um, there are a few things that I wish I had handled differently, um, or maybe phrased differently. Um, any major things that I regret saying, I don't know. Like, I know that in, at some point in my life, something I've said at one point will probably be thrown in my face to condemn me. Um, and I have to accept that. And that's a consequence of what I do. And I have to take accountability for that. I can't run from it and I can't play victim because of it. Um, I'm an adult and I know what I'm doing. Um, but so that being said, a couple years from now, when that happens, there probably will be something that when it's shown to me again, years later, I'll probably regret it or maybe not like the way that I said it, even if I stand behind the belief or my opinion i'm like I, I didn't like the way i said it so um there probably is something it just nothing jumps to my mind what about you armin well i mean depends on what you mean by right wing i think the things that um, i might have changed my mind which could be considered right winning is the level of involvement that the government makes sense for the government to be uh, to to have in a in a in the economy so I, when I was younger, um, I used to believe in a very, 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 very small involvement by the government in the economy. Um, and I'm still a free market capitalist, but based on my studies, I tend to believe in a slightly somewhat more involvement of the government in the economy. But I understand that involvement of government in the economy will slow down the economy, but there are certain things that sometimes are important just a little bit more, you know, just to some extent, not like I'm not I'm not interested in any form of command economics, but I do believe more in regulation and social safety nets compared to before. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. I, when it comes to social issues, I'm less left leaning than you. I don't know if I would say that I have right wing beliefs. People mm. will try to take them from me and frame me as right wing, but really I'm not. I'm like very pro marriage. I'm very pro family. I'm very pro fatherhood. Like these are things that are like very, very important to me. Um, mm. yeah, but I don't think I'm like full blown right wing. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Don't even get me started. <laughs> Uh, Reincarnation Entertainment is celebrating his membership for two months, saying, apart from the mm -hmm. fact the foreknowledge and, and free will equals A and... A, a, not A. A and not, not a. a. What are you, both of your best arguments against Islam specifically? Well, the existence of hell, which uh, Islam says God is um, all merciful and all loving and all merciful, and then he created hell. There you go. That's easy. Mm. That would be the best argument. Yeah. Um, Reincarnation Entertainment also gave us a five super chat saying, here's an extra five. You guys are the best atheists. More people should know about you. Oh, oh. <laughs> this Thank is so you. sweet. Well, if you have other friends that enjoy this kind of content, like make sure to let them know. Like, yeah, let them know. know. Yes, thank Get, you. Thank you. Make a suggestion. Um, Gaijin gave another super chat saying, "Clearly, Islam was created by Basset to defeat dogs. Basset is like the Egyptian <laughs> goddess of yes, um, yeah, the 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 cats. Right. Um, cat, yeah, cat guy." Me Loves gave 50 Danish Krona. Thank you. Saying, thanks for the inspiration, guys. I'm a member of the left-wing party in Denmark, and I will be 
pushing for easier asylum for ex-Muslims, a.k.a. apostates. Hell yes! Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service, me loves. I love to hear that. Mm. Yeah. It's, a, you know, this population really needs a lot of support. Um, mm. Gaijin, another super chat. Wow, thank you. Saying the anime legend of ex exoticism has an Iranian prince who uses Zoroastrian fire magic to fight Chinese demons. Oh my God. Hmm. Gaijin, yes. can you can you DM that to me? That sounds freaking <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, okay. Reza gave another five pound super chat saying, warning, we love cats, Susanna. <laughs> <laughs> hey they're adorable even if they are even if even if they're evil they're cute evil is still cute Susie. okay in fact if i in fact their evilness makes them even more cute because they're like they're like little demons and they're adorable and the fact that there's a lot of evilness behind it makes it like more loving i don't know i kind of like it i like it. <laughs> it's because you're evil yes yes because on the inside evil. You are evil, sir. I understand. <laughs> it's because you were late. It's because you see yourself <laughs> represented by these demons yes. that'll eat your chest. <laughs> no, okay. Um, and uh, who, who, what's this person's name? How do you read it? I forget. Oh, Hadebne Ad. Okay. Uh, basically, just gave us a super chat saying, "Good luck." Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. Idris gave us a super chat saying, do you think inheritance should be abolished in the interests of meritocracy and be used to fund scholarships, for example? No. No, no, no. Because part of the reason why you try to make money is to try to provide a better life for your children. So that incentive being taken away from you is yeah, will be yeah. very problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like you should, for a lot you of should have the choice for a yeah. lot of communities that need to build generational wealth. Why would we deprive them of that opportunity? Yes, yes. I mean, that's a major motivational driver of the reason why people work hard. They they have a love for their children, and they're trying to like they're working because they want to be able to provide for them and make sure. You have to be have the freedom to be able to know that I did enough that when I'm dying, I feel like I left my children with enough to be able to support them. So why would we take that away, that opportunity away from people? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Ivan is here, by the way. Thank you for being here, Ivan. Ivan from the... Ivan John! <laughs> yeah, wait, maybe I should make Ivan a mod here as well, if I could find him. Ivan, leave a comment. Oh, here. Um, make him. I just want to address something really quick. So Oxymoron in the live chat was taking an attitude with D, our mod and our editor. And last week at the end of the show, we like briefly mentioned how I've been considering banning Oxymoron for a while now. And there was an interesting discussion in the comments of last week's episode, basically saying like, oh, like, don't do that. It's interesting to have debate and we shouldn't like just kick out people on the basis of their views. Here's the thing. I should have made it more clear. I want to be on oxymoron because of how he treats us. I want to be on oxymoron because of his unkindness, his unkindness, his bad faith attitudes, because here's the thing. We vehemently disagree with him. We find his opinions disgusting and abhorrent, but we have allowed him to be a part of our community for years now. So it's unfair to say that we're kicking out someone because of their opinions differing from us or them being critical of us. That's not true because we have allowed him. I've, I've thought about it. I remember it. I was like, he's been a part of our community for at least two years now. So it's not about that. But I was thinking about it recently. And lately he's taken such a negative, unkind attitude towards us. Mm. And you saying this BS to D taking an attitude for her is literally my last straw. Because D volunteers her time, takes time out of her busy day where she has to work her job, work hard to provide for her family. She takes time away from spending time with her family or other people that she cares about to do a service to our organization to, that provides an opportunity for people to come together and have a community, enjoy spending time together. She's doing a service to your ass, oxymoron. With the with the reward being that she finds personal satisfaction out of this. 
The reward being that it provides something for our community. So she deserves nothing but respect. And so I'm not going to tolerate you disrespecting our volunteers like this. There is nothing more valuable than someone can give our organization and our entire community than the gift of their dedicated and committed long-term time. And I'm not going to tolerate you disrespecting our, our volunteers like this. They don't deserve it. And they do nothing but actually provide you with something, asking for nothing in return. So this is why I'm banning you. You've been taking an attitude with me and being so unkind to me for a long time now. And I don't know why I tolerated it because I don't tolerate it when you do this to D. I'm also a volunteer. Why am I tolerating it when you treat me like this? I'm not going to anymore. So this is why you're officially banned. Okay. Anyways, now that that's out of the way. Uh, Everybody, please say th thank D for all the work that she does. Like show that even though um, Oxymoron is not grateful for her time, that the rest of us, we are so grateful for what she does. Yeah. And thank you, Susie. It was a bad time. <laughs> live chat everyone's showing d love i love d she's smart and sensible yeah you don't talk shit to d <laughs> <laughs> and i know i know that d is probably not mad and i know that she's probably not bothered blah 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 but for me it's a principle and for me it's about i'm very protective of my friends <laughs> right i'm very protective of the people that i care about and especially the people that are so um committed to our organization uh, because people showing, giving us the gift of their time over long periods of time is literally what keeps us going. Um, so she deserves nothing but appreciation and respect. Um, <laughs> I'm loving the outpouring of love in the live chat. Um, yeah. I'm the type of person where even if like one of my friends isn't offended by what someone said, I'm, I'm going to go, jump down someone's throat over it even when they're like girl it wasn't that deep and i'm like it was to me <laughs> <laughs> yo you should see well, how crazy i get behind the scenes when someone comes for armin oh yeah oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i've had people be like susanna you need to calm down and i'm like no you need to calm down <laughs> Um, we got a super chat with um, D with two hearts around her. Thank you so much, Vahid, Vahid, for the super chat. That's very sweet. Thank you. Um, um, but we should. I know we just got another super chat by Dave, but we should do that on yeah, the, the next segment Sid, because Sid, we Sid, need Dave, to go gonna, to the next yeah. new segment. Yeah, Sid, Dave, we're gonna answer that super chat in the next uh, new segment. And guys, we got a ton of super chats today, so thank you so much for all the support. We appreciate that. All right, is it clappable? Yes, this is just kind of hilarious. Okay, next news. Next news, footballer Neymar's cross pendant sparks outrage among Saudi clerics. Brazilian soccer player Neymar found himself at the center of a heated controversy after wearing a diamond studded cross pendant upon his arrival in Ridia, Saudi Arabia to mark his signing with the Al-Hilal Saudi Football Club. Although the event was a significant milestone for both Neymar and the Saudi Arabia's sports sector, which has begun actively recruiting global talents like uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim uh, Benzema, the focus uh, quickly shifted to Neymar's <laughs> choice of accessory. Many Islamic clerics and scholars took offense at the pendant, viewing it as a disrespectful gesture to, in a region considered the birthplace of Islam. Moroccan cleric Abdullah Niari lambasted Neymar in a video criticizing him for bearing the Trinity emblem in the land of monotheism, while Algerian cleric Musa Azouni denounced Neymar for wearing a cross pendant in the, quote, land of the two holy mosques, and urged Algerians to condemn Neymar's actions and instead consider the Mujahideen and martyrs as role models, not these footballers. <laughs> um, 
And the incident sparked a flurry of debates on social media, with some users deeming the pennant disrespectful and offensive, while others accused the clerics of in- hindering Saudi Arabia's progress in sports. Yasser al Qatani, the retired captain of the Saudi national football team, defended Neymar on Twitter, accusing his clerics of fostering discord and being oblivious to the true teachings of Islam, which he described as a religion of tolerance and peace. Al-Qadani's statements highlighted the broader tensions at play as Saudi Arabia's efforts to modernize and attract global talent clash with deeply ingrained religious and cultural sensitivities. So let us look at the cross pendant in question. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Um, that's diamond. That's whole diamond. That's I diamond cover. That's like hell yeah, boy. Very, oh my god. <laughs> Nothing but sure ice Jesus on that would, neck. Okay. Yeah. No. That that I'm is sure actually Jesus a would appreciate that. Diamonds. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Jesus is happy. Like I don't know why. Okay. Sure. I mean the man. Okay. The man that was like the story of like the guy that spent time with the poor and saying the the weak shall inherit the meek shall inherit the earth and everything this is exactly goes completely in line with that branding a, a diamond covered cross i'm sure i'm sure he would appreciate that but i know i don't i know the hypocrisy aside i kind of like this um the fact that this what is the saudi government doing with this they're just like i mean i know a whole bunch of saudi moms are kind of upset about this but the saudi government is completely a okay with this right I mean, if they weren't, they would have stopped it. And that's actually what a lot of people on social media are saying, because there has been incidents in the past where footballers had to like have their heads shaved before matches because their haircuts were deemed un-Islamic. And so people on social media are like, what happened to that time? What happened? What changed? Like, are we nothing now? You know, it was funny. A lot of people on social yes. media were interpreting this as basically um, a show of force being like, he's shoving it in our faces, how much his fame and money like can get him whatever right. he wants, blah, blah, blah. Like this is, there were people saying that this was expressly intentional. Right. It's, it looks like, I mean, to be fair to them, it looks like that because look how, Saudi didn't used to allow this, and now that they are like, okay, guys, we need we need tourism, we need we need entertainment, and they're allowing it. This person like, oh, are you allowing it now? Well, let me t- let me test that. Let me test how much. You're- it does seem like he's testing how far he could go. Like this is pretty explicit, okay. like right but out let's there. Let's be clear. Yeah. Like Neymar probably has like no awareness about why. This oh, he is doesn't. Sensitive. I don't think okay. that he would. Oh, okay. We like don't? Most, did, 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 I, that I'm going to be honest, like with that stuff that happened with Iggy Azalea, you know, like okay. people have like some awareness of taboos in Islam, blah, 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 but they wouldn't really have an understanding of how deep it goes or that this okay, so would he, be considered that offensive. I don't so think So you're saying these people are not heroes. So you're saying these people are not heroes. They're just not aware of what the, what I, they're doing. Yes. That's way <laughs> okay, more likely. Okay. That's way more likely okay. than Neymar is like, I'm going to show them. I'm going <laughs> to show them. Are you kidding me? No. Because this is like a totally normal thing. And besides the fact that this is probably worth a million dollars or something around his neck. <laughs> like That's like normal. You know, you see celebrities in the West like wearing stuff like this all the time. Besides the fact that it's an extremely extravagant accessory, like no one would think twice about this. This is just like a normal, you know, bling bling accessory, blah, blah, blah. Mm. They're not thinking about I'm wearing a sign of the Trinity in the land of monotheism. <laughs> so it, I, I okay. would be shocked to hear that he that he specifically did this intentionally. Now, was it intentional on the part of any official that allowed him to wear it? Yeah, they they uh, intentionally allowed him to to wear that when he landed and did this giant photo op. But right. so like Army, um, what do you think of that? How do how do you unpack that? I okay, so I want to remind people that this is happening while at the same time I think that we're going to cover this next week because this just happened just like it and we don't we need to so I think we're going to cover it next week. 
What? Somebody in Saudi Arabia, there was a man with 10 followers on Twitter. Yeah. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not 10,000, okay? Not 1,000, okay? Not 100 with 10, 10 followers on Twitter. Because of what he posted on Twitter, he is now being executed. Like they, 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 they say, well, I mean, I don't know if they're going to carry it out or not, but now he's been arrested in Saudi Arabia for his tweets and his views on religion and politics. All right. So that we're going to probably cover that next week. So this guy is getting away with showing a cross, something that is Islamically not allowed in Saudi Arabia. This is the land of the Prophet. This should not be allowed in any Islamic country because according to Islam, you're allowed to be Christian if you're born a Christian, but you're not allowed to display Christianity on Islamic land, which that's what he's doing. This is, this is against Islamic law. And not only he's doing that, he's doing that on not an Islamic land, He's doing that on the Islamic land, on the Saudi Arabia, which is the Islamic land where Prophet Muhammad promised that no Jews and Christians will ever be allowed. So he's displaying, he's, he's, this is like so taboo Islamically for him to do that. And so with this man, because he has money, he, because he's famous, because Saudi Arabia has Vision 2030 and all of that, and trying to get tourism and business and investments flowing into Saudi Arabia, this guy can get away with all of that. And Saudi Arabia is like, nothing to see here. But a Saudi citizen with 10 followers is now getting the death penalty for his posts on Twitter about religion and politics. So you see the, um, by the way, just to be, just, just to be clear, not to be fair, just to be clear. I, I almost said just to be fair. None of this is fair. Uh, just to be clear, that guy's brother is an activist in outside of Saudi Arabia. So it might have something to do with that. They're probably punishing his mm. brother, not the man himself. They're going after his brother. Yeah. Which is evil, which is pretty evil, by the way, to go after someone's brother because of the guy that you're trying to punish. Yeah, but we will cover that next week. Just, but so, j j just a reminder that the Saudi government is still evil. If you're seeing all this tolerance, this is out of desperation for the money. Okay, this has nothing to do with them all of a sudden being good people. Because when it comes to their own people, they are, and also the Yemenis, they're as evil as ever. Yeah. Yeah, but guys, make sure to tune in next week because that just happened recently. And so we're going to do the full yeah. write up and talk about that next week 100%. That's really important. Um, but yeah, I, I, I appreciated that you explained like why this is significant and why this is taboo, Armin, because a lot of people wouldn't automatically get that. Like, mm. yeah. Like infidels are literally not even supposed to be in Saudi at all, really. <laughs> yeah, Let alone I mean, doing something like this. <laughs> yeah, um, there's different interpretation of what Muhammad said um, on that. Some people are saying that he meant all of Saudi Arabia, or well, technically Arabia, because there was no Saudi Arabia. There was no Saudi back there. The Arabian. Um, um, area okay so yeah so <laughs> the hijaz the, the hijaz the hijaz right so um, some people say no he just meant around the kaaba like the city of mecca that's why if you see um if you're trying to go to if you're passing mecca you can see their road signs that it says that if you are if you're not a muslim you shouldn't take a different route like there are signs for rest for muslims and non-muslims because they don't want non-muslims to get too close to the kaaba which is weird. Yeah. Uh, there's been tons of cases of non-Muslims getting into the Kaaba. Yeah, and ex-Muslims. We have a famous yeah. picture of uh, Rana taking a picture of Atheist Republic, um, but the papers are writing Atheist Republic on it right next to the Kaaba. So that was the first we have like atheist photo in front of the Kaaba ever. Oh, wow. Was it the first? Oh, my God. That I have oh. ever found. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so... Let's go through the super chats and we'll try to uh, do these fast. So Sid Dave is saying, what do you think of 
Vivek Rams Wami. I don't know who that is. Is that Rams Wami? Okay. He's a he's a Republican Rams. presidential candidate in the U.S. Oh, the 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 Indian guy mm-hmm. isn't he Hindu? Okay, mm-hmm. isn't he he's Hindu? His proposal his proposal of having people under twenty five take same test that immigrants take uh, to be able to vote is that a good idea? No, that is well, no, that is not a good idea. You want people to have access because. Okay, first of all, it doesn't matter. He's a Hindu, and Republicans are not going to make a Hindu president. So there's that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. necessarily agree with that, but I oh you don't? You should. There's no way that Republicans are going to be like, oh yeah, sure, let's have a Hindu president. Nah, the guy has to be Christian, right? Um, also, this is a bad idea because you're creating two tier citizenships. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of poor people, are not going to be knowledgeable knowledgeable enough to be able to vote. Okay, so lack of access to education makes it makes it voting less accessible to people. We want people with lower education and less access to resources to have access to voting, or else they're going to be ignored by politicians. We don't want them to be ignored by politicians. So that's a bad idea. So quickly, let's go to the next. Uh, Newman is saying, D is awesome. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Newman. Yes, thank you, D. Yeah. Um, Sid Dave is saying, if Saudi Arabia became, thank you so much for the super chat, Sid. Saying, if Saudi Arabia became a secular democracy where women are, uh, where women are, and uh, women and non, I think you mean and, and non Muslims are equal, that would solve the problem of Islamic terror, a pipe dream, I guess. It would not solve it. It would make it a lot less, but it would not solve it. There are still many other countries that will funding it. And even if the if even if governments are not funding it, there will be a lot of individuals that will be, continue to support that. But yes, it will re- dramatically reduce the problem. Uh, I mean, we still have the Islamic Republic of Iran and you know Pakistan and Bangladesh and Indonesia and Malaysia and many other things to worry about. Okay, Sid saying... And Egypt, Sid is saying, did Armin ever go, thank you again for the super chat, did Armin ever go to Mecca, Medina, I saw a video and some of the rituals were really crazy and insane and I wonder how any thinking person does it. Well, I did not go there, I have went to the Dome of the Rock and I have pictures there and everything, but unfortunately I have not been to Medina and Mecca. Um, and also, I don't agree that any thinking, I, I do think, when you say any thinking person does it, there are thinking people that do that. Okay, so just because some people are wrong about certain things, it doesn't mean they're wrong about um, all things. There, it is possible that some somebody might be even a genius and still believe in all this nonsense because they're genius in other departments. Okay, so and we can compartmentalize. Sometimes very genius people are very stupid about specific things. Okay, um, okay, and then also Sina, thank you so much for the ten dollars super chat. Really appreciate that, Sina. Saying thank you, Sina. There is Jim. actually. <laughs> Thank you, Sina. Sina is saying there is actually a selfie of this guy with two. Oh yes, I've seen that. Uh, acid tabs in his mouth next to the Kaaba doing this uh, spinny thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so that yeah. guy is that. Okay. So that guy is. We don't. We're not saying that guy is not a Muslim. That guy probably just wanted to meet God directly rather than visiting <laughs> God himself, visiting God's house. Yeah. Like why should I? Why should I visit God's house where I could just go see him himself? So that's what that was. That's what. It was no, but here. having that kind of drugs in Saudi, he like risked his life to even have that in his possession, let alone do right. it and then do it and publicly document it. Right. On the floor of the Kaaba. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> and then it's additionally crazy to think about what his experience would be. Right. <laughs> because if you're doing psychedelics, being around people that are not also tripping is a terrifying experience. Right. <laughs> it's a terrifying experience. So when I saw that photo, I was like, there were like seven different levels of the, how this man is like out of his mind. <laughs> But it's, a, what it's an him. iconic photo because his face, he's like this. He's like, wait, <laughs> wait can I, can, I know people, can I show the picture? If I yeah, yeah, yeah. Cena's saying you know, pretty epic guy, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not going right. to lie. It is, it's iconic. It's iconic. Yeah, it do you think, I think that would be a bad trip. That would, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Zayd is saying is higher a... than Allah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I love this photo so much. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's okay, so we're crazy. Gonna... Guys, we're not encouraging any of that use of material on YouTube. We're not encouraging. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Oh, yeah. Jeans everywhere. Oh. Yo. Um, all right. So. Oh, so we got another super chat, but we're gonna read that on the next news. But by the way, guys, thank you so much. Every, like this is the, like we're getting so many super chats between the news. So thank you guys, we really appreciate that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put myself down while you read the next news. But is it clappable? I'm gonna clap before I. Go, uh, I'll um, be right back. Oh yeah, this is controversial. A controversial. All right, next news. One second. One second. Next news. France tightens religious clothing ban. Islamic abayas banned in schools. In a bold move that has reignited fiery debates about religious freedom and secularism in France, education minister Gabriel Attal announced a ban on Islamic abayas in state schools. This decision, revealed during a television interview, amplifies the ongoing controversy, controversy initiated when hijabs were banned in schools. Atal asserted, quote, when you walk into a classroom, you shouldn't be able to identify the pupil's religion just based by looking at them. The French Council of Muslim Affairs, or CFCM for short, hit back, arguing that clothing is not a quote unquote religious sign. This latest ban, following prohibitions on hijabs in 2004 and full face veils in 2010, has unleashed a torrent of opinions across the political spectrum, exposing deep divides about the role of Islam in French society and the balance between upholding secular traditions and protecting civil liberties. With France's Muslim community, the largest in Europe, feeling targeted, the nation finds itself at a critical juncture, forced to reconcile with its past by its increasingly diverse present. So, Armin, what do you think about this move? Abayas right. banned in state schools. Okay, so... Okay, I will give give you both sides, and you guys tell me what you think. Okay, so from the side of like, yeah, this is a good idea. Um, I mean, if you could display your religion in class, then you're obviously using government money to advertise a certain viewpoint, and also teachers could discriminate based on who who's in line with their religious teaching, and you want. A teaching environment, especially if it's government funded, to be free from these biases and free um, and where both children are being treated equally, right? So that's the argument for it, right? The argument against it is like is that you're going to make girls not be able to attend school and stay home and not get edu get educated. However, I don't think France allows that. So France is I don't super even know what strict against that kind of thing. That's my understanding. I'm sure there are unfortunately probably people that fall through the cracks, but they don't like allow homeschooling or there's very, very okay. tight controls on it. Tighter than the United States. That's my understanding. Okay. So what do we have any other arguments against this? Because that's the only thing I could come up with. Why? What do you think? Well, the main criticism that people have brought forth with this ban is that the Abaya is not inherently Islamic. They're like, who said that the abaya is Islamic? Like, a lot of people just wear this, this form of clothing, like in our culture. Like, what a That's it's nonsense. not inherent. Obviously, they Islamic. they argue that it's not inherently a religious symbol at all. That's nonsense. It's kind of like wearing a cross and saying, like, who says that's a cross? That's a T. That's the, that's how dumb that argument is. Obviously, it's Islamic. Like, oh, tell me, like, I'm just this. My name is Tina, and this is a T. It's not a cross. Come on. Is is obviously Islamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, there it, it brings up the broader question of, I mean, this is a state school though, so that changes things heavily. But it, it brings up a broader question of how much authority and ability do we want the state as a project to have in in its ability to uh, directly dictate this it's kind of thing funded. among its citizens that's a broader question it's 
it's a state funded school. I mean, can mm -hmm. can do we have private schools that people are allowed to have the hijab there in France? I think as long I think this is completely fine as long as you have private schools that you're allowed to wear whatever you want. I mean, I'm sure doesn't France have Catholic schools? Uh, yeah. So, okay. So I'm I'm pretty sure in Catholic schools in France, you're allowed to have the cross and all the other religious symbols, right? So if you have private schools, you could wear the hijab, you could wear the cross, you could wear that little Jewish thing on your head. What is that called? The kippa, 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 kippa right yeah. in the head, kippa. You could wear a turban if you're Sikh. Okay, you do it in your private school. This is a religious funded school. That I means religious. This is a government funded school. And the government is like, yeah, this is a secular country. We do not allow um, this being a platform, this this platform that we have provided funding for, for it to be used as promoting any kind of religion. I think that's completely fair. I'm, I mean, I don't know. if Doesn't France have private schools? Can somebody let us know in the live chat that you could, uh, you're allowed to do these things in private schools? They do, but I, I know that the hijab is banned in schooling, in at least state schooling for children under the age of 18. I don't know right. if it is allowed if it was a private Islamic school. And I do believe that there are very tight restrictions on Islamic private schools because France is dealing with this issue of like separatism from the Republic, as they call it. So uh, to what extent is there a double standard? I'm not sure. I mean, if it's below 18, having a burqa on children should be illegal anywhere, like outside of school, inside of school, even inside of your house, putting a burqa on a child should be should be considered child abuse. That's not just a normal hijab. That's just like cover your face and everything. That is child abuse. The, I mean, we saw, because we saw what the COVID masks did to children's social and speaking skills, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that was just two years. Right. Imagine the entirety of someone's childhood being having their face covered if they go in public. That mm -hmm. is that is definitely child abuse. Well, no, the harm was less about children having their own faces covered and more about always seeing other people's faces covered, especially yeah, but, for but, very, but, very young children. That was the real harm. I know, but we un we understand that importance of seeing someone's face to be have bonding with them, to have an emotional connection with them. Yeah. So if you can't have an emotional connection with other people because they, they see, you can't see your you can't see their face, then that would be same the same way with other people cheating. Like how you are not seen in society, mm. people's minds associate your face with your personhood, with your You're with your right. Right. So if you are not seen in the public, then you are not seen. You're invisible. Your entire childhood, you're growing up and you're not being noticed as an individual in society. That is child abuse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, um, yeah. 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 It's really tough. Because then, then, you know, I, I just with my political orientation or my instinct is just to wonder about giving the state the power to interfere in these kinds of things. But that that's a much broader topic than just this specific form of dress. But yeah, yeah. man. And, and people basically people don't realize that this applies to other religious symbols as well. So, like, children aren't allowed to have, like, giant crosses. They're not allowed to have the kippah in school, blah, blah, blah. They, right. France is taking yeah. a very firm stance about promoting equality of the sexes in, within its country. And I'm in full support. And I, it's so unfair that people just focusing on the Islamic ones, even though Fran France is being co consistent on banning all religion symbols in school. This is not a uniquely an anti-Islam position. OK, so the fact that people are being sensitive towards the Islamic ones shows how privileged Islamic views are in society compared to other religions. Um, you are not lying. Yeah. Mm -mm. And people are like, oh, this is that. Yeah, this is actually shows the opposite. People are like, oh, people are more hateful towards Islam. But actually, it shows the opposite. It shows that people are more. Uh, Islam, uh, more concerned about being anti-Islam, Islam, Islam pr uh, enjoys more protection given that people are not jumping into the defense of Sikhs or Christians 
or Jewish people, they're not, the people are not jumping in their defense. People are jumping in defense of Muslims. So you cannot cry victimhood when more people are defending you against this role, against this rule than other religions. Um, and also, so this comment I, that D highlighted, I wanted to read this one, is saying, insecure Western so-called democracy wants to dictate, dictate to people what they can and cannot wear. This is not an accurate description of what's going on. Is it if you go to your work with shorts on, like like a man that wants to wear shorts at work at the office, and your workplace says like, nope, you do not get to wear that here, right? Or with sandals. Like imagine if you want to go, you're a uh, you're working at the bank and you want to go work at the bank with your sandals on, and the bank is like, I'm sorry, we do not allow here. Is that against democracy? Is, is that against your freedom of expression? That's the rule for that specific environment. This is not against democracy. I don't understand what you're talking about. Is it against freedom of speech? If I get fired from a government job because I swore I use, I swore against my um, employer. If I shouted like F words directly to his face and they fire me, should I say like, oh, what happened to your freedom of speech? These are specific conditions for specific environments. Another comment in support was saying, congratulations to France. Religion has no place in schools. Okay, there's so these are the comments. One oh. comment I wanted to address. So there's a comment by Zaid, and he raises a question that we kind of touched on. But he's, he's saying, but what if Muslim parents deny their children education because of this? And this is a really important question because we can talk all we want about the principles of having this within a classroom space, but we need to be um, realistic and deeply consider the consequences, right? So my understanding is that France has very strict controls over this kind of thing. Now, if it mm. if I learn more and learn that actually France does not have the ability to interfere and ensure that children are receiving education and are not being at, denied education by their parents, then right. I would have more qualms about this. So for example, that is why I feel differently on this issue than the hijab ban that happened in Karnataka in India. Because in India, the state has way less ability to actually ensure that children are not being denied education by their families. Girls in India disproportionately drop out of school as soon as they get their period. Millions and millions and millions of girls stop going to school just because they get their period. So adding an additional layer of girls not being allowed to wear the hijab in classroom will make that that much more difficult, which ultimately will harm the Muslim community and more than harm the Muslim community for the people that were fighting to ban the hijab. They were saying that they don't like it because it shows basically kind of like the strength of Islam and Islamic dominance and all this stuff. But girls that are educated are actually going to be much more likely to be way more liberal in their interpretation of Islam or leave it entirely. Right. So it would actually be to their benefit to allow it for some period of time so that they have the ability to then be more independent and dictate what they want to do with their own life. Right. And because there's already like no ability for the state to ensure that children are being educated. I think the consequences in that context is much more severe than the consequence of allowing the hijab in the classroom. So it might seem hypocritical to some people, but really I'm thinking about the consequences of this decision in that specific context. And at the end of the day, I'm concerned about the likelihood and ability for these girls to get educated. And the, that context changes some of those factors, right? So I personally don't believe that that's hypocritical. Um, but it is, it is a very, it is a very genuine concern. And if, if the, if because of this girls were being the denied the ability to leave the house altogether mm. and there was no ability to interfere and intervene in that, then I wouldn't support this. That Does that make sense? sense? That makes complete sense. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, do you mind if I go to the bathroom right. while you read some super chats? Yes. But, yes. Um, Actually reading, reading the super chats is a good opportunity for you to also use the, Get a yes, but I want to answer the super chat about FGM. So I'll be right back. Okay, I will give my answer as before you come. Can you hear me while you're away? Yeah, okay, good. All right, well put. Okay, there we go. All right, let's go through the super chats. Uh, Susie wants to do the FGM one. So Prash, is that the super, which one is the 
FGM one. Is that the third one? Okay, let me see. Prash is saying, thank you so much, Prash, for the super chat, saying Muslims claim Ab Abraham, Abraham, okay, Abraham means Abraham. Abraham built the Kaaba, but you say he never went to Saudi Arabia ever. Found it funny that Muslims completely made up a trip to Saudi. Yeah, um, it doesn't make sense at all for Abraham to just walk away all the way down there. It's, a, it's too far away for Abraham just to go there for a visit to his son Ismail. It makes complete. It makes it's completely nonsensical. However, Prash, um, you should find the entire story of Abraham as as a whole funny because it's not just that trip that was made up. Abraham as a whole is a made up story. So yeah. Uh, so the, the Jewish people are also making up Abraham to be fair. All right. Another super chat by Prash. Thank you so much for the super chat saying if trans surgeries under 18 can be allowed, is this the one? Oh yeah. If yeah. So I'm going to leave this for last because so Susie is here. Gaging American with a $5 super chat is saying when tech becomes advanced enough would LED display masks that display a false avatar for anonymity be permissible. Um, I'm sure it will be. I don't see how any. Oh, yeah, actually, I don't know. I think sure. Yeah, you're right. I think people who are saying that we shouldn't be covering our faces in public for security reasons. Yeah, that that might they might have it depends on the country right so it depends on the country but i assume like yes in some countries it would be illegal yeah so it depends on what you're talking about um all right so oh susie is back right in time so you want to read this question by prash yeah prash thank you for the super chat first of all saying if trans surgeries under 18 can be allowed in the name of parental and child consent can female circumcision also not be allowed by that logic okay so Female genital mutilation is internationally recognized as a human rights abuse. It is a unique form of sexual abuse of the child. It is sexual abuse. And it is gender-based violence that is imbued in cultures that dictate and mandate the most severe forms of control over women in general, women's bodies in general, and women's sexuality in particular. And this happens in most cultures, even around the age of only a few days old to around the ages of eight, sometimes even older. And so there is no okay form of FGM because every single form of FGM, because there's even a practice called pricking where it's almost like just ceremonial. Every single form is dictating that a woman's sexuality is dangerous, needs to be excised, that it's dirty. Every single form of it dictates levels of, of shame and that it it's um i can't find the words that i'm looking for but it's sexual abuse it is and it's it's domestic violence because <laughs> it's mostly perpetuated and done by families and it's it's gender based violence and those things are unacceptable and which is different than the context of a child pursuing treatment for gender dysphoria because those should be things that are articulated by the child itself, right? And it should be done without coercion because even if FGM was like allowed at a later age, blah, 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 I would have severe concerns about coercion from the community involved. So by the same token, any child pursuing these, this kind of treatment, it should be done without coercion or even necessarily certain forms of positive reinforcement. That's my opinion. Um, I have a lot of opinions about this. I have actually a lot of skepticisms about this. Um, 
But because I still want to find a lot more data before I start talking about it publicly, I'm not going to go out and make all these proclamations about the, the, the treatment of, of minors in a, in a, in a medical physical context for gender dysphoria, because I do have concerns. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't have concerns. Um, but it is really not comparable to FGM. Yeah, I think that was complete. So I don't have, yeah, it, I don't think it's a fair comparison, but you're right. Um, okay. Can we clap for the next news? Um, oh man. Well, we, we don't like this, but we can clap. Next news. Next news. Soldiers of God lead violent assault on Lebanese drag event. In a harrowing act of violence, the Soldiers of God, an extremist Christian paramilitary group, unleashed an onslaught on a Beirut bar called the Om Bar Room during a drag event, epitomizing the escalating wave of hatred and bigotry against the LGBT community in Lebanon. The group, notorious for promoting violence and endorsing far-right ideologies akin to those in Europe and the U.S., besieged and attacked the bar, re wreaking havoc on the property and assaulting attendees while bellowing, this shop is for Satan. It's promoting homosexuality. It's forbidden in the land of the Lord. Eyewitness accounts reveal apathy from the police, who, despite being present during the assault, chose to question the bar owner and the attendees about the performance rather than intervene. This latest assault is part of a broader pattern of attacks and heightened anti-LGBT rhetoric from religious and political leaders in a country once celebrated for its religious diversity. This incident lays bare the mounting challenges confronting the LGBT community, not just in Lebanon, but across the Middle East. Wait, so what is this group that has done the attack? Soldiers of God? The soldiers of God. Is it, yeah, they're they're a Christian paramilitary it, group in Lebanon. Wow. So Christian, this is Christian terrorism, hey? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, because we keep being told by Christians, like, where are you know? See, we don't have terrorist groups. Like, you know how a lot of sometimes we have Hindus in the live chat. They say, at least we don't behead people. And then they go around and some of them do actually behead people. And we're like, so that doesn't apply anymore. Right. And so here's another example of um, Christians sometimes say like, well, at least we don't have terrorist groups. I'm like, you do, you do, you do. Yeah. yeah. So if, is, did you say, was anybody, did you mention anybody dying? No, no, no. There were people that were assaulted and injured. Okay. So to be fair, though, it's much less than the Islamic terror groups. Yeah. But, it, but Although apparently, I, I was exist. reading about how uh, Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah in Lebanon, was recently talking about how um, YouTube, I am talking about the opinion of other people. I am reporting on this for educational purposes. He said that LGBT people were a danger to society and called for them to be killed as recently as this last July. Okay. So, and wow. this is Hezbollah. So this is emboldened by the state. Yeah. 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 Just another reminder, uh, a reminder of how uh, bad the situation in Lebanon is. And it's getting worse, you it know, is. all it the is. time. Yeah. Zaid is time. bringing up a good point. He's saying Lebanon was the safest country in the Middle East to be LGBT. Not anymore, though. Yeah. I think the safest country okay. to be LGBT in the Middle East is probably Israel right is, now. Is, yeah, yeah, Israel. Yeah, Israel. Say what you will, but they offer asylum to Palestinians that are like going to be beheaded by their families because they're LGBT. So, yeah, yeah. All right, can we clap for the next news? Oh, you'll like this. Oh, really? Okay. Next news. Oh wait, next that was news. horrible. Wait, wait, wait. That was horrible. Let me try again. Next news. I don't I actually I don't like it when you wind all the way back to do it. I don't like that. No, okay. you no, don't I, like don't, that? I don't know okay. why. I don't know why. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right. Well, then I go like this. Mixed news. Is that Thank better? you. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, judge rules religious parents can't opt out kids of LGBT lessons. A U.S. district court dismissed a request by parents in the Montgomery County of Maryland to allow their children to opt out of classes during LGBT discussing LGBT books, stating that the use of the storybooks did not cross the line from, quote, permissible influence to potentially impermissible indoctrination. This decision followed the Montgomery uh, County Public Schools announcement that of a more inclusive English and language arts curriculum, which included books such as well, the titled Pride Puppy and My Rainbow, sparking a public outcry and concerns about the age appropriateness of the books. While some school principals initially allowed the families to opt out, uh, the Montgomery County Public Schools ended this option in March leading to a lawsuit by three Muslim and Christian families who claimed that their religious freedom was violated. Eric Baxter, vice president of the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty, said, quote, the school board should let kids be kids and let parents decide how and when to best educate their own children consistent with their religious beliefs. Meanwhile, David Fishback of PFLAG, which stands for Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays in Maryland, applauded the decision, saying they would make a difference in the lives of children experiencing depression and loneliness due to their sexual orientation and gender identity. This decision is, th this is the important part. This decision is a preliminary injunction and the case is still pending a final decision. So what that means is that because school was about to start really soon, they had to make a, a, a kind of a temporary decision before it goes to court for a final decision, right? So basically because school is about to start, the judge for the moment said, no, you can't opt out of this. We'll still go to trial. We'll still, you know, d make a full decision. But in the meantime, the preliminary injunction for the school year, because things are time sensitive and they're happening before the trial is that, no, you can't opt out. He said that, quote, permissible, that this did not cross the line from permissible influence to potentially impermissible indoctrination. So... I know you probably have a lot of opinions about this, Armin. Tell me well, your thoughts. Well, I just to for people to understand how disgusting this is, I I invite them often to imagine if this was not about LGBT issues, it was about you know black tolerance, tolerance towards black people, and. This was something that was a program in a school that was for the children to understand, you know, and there were some parents that wanted to opt out of that. I think more people will understand how disgusting and vile that is. Um, or if they were trying to teach the children about the, the discrimination against Jewish people during, in history. And there were parents who were like, you know what? I don't think I don't want my kids to be brainwashed. I want to up my kids out of that. I think people were like, shut the F up. You should not be allowed to up your children out of that. I think once you compare it and the fact that we need to compare it to these other issues like black tolerance or Jewish people tolerance for people to understand how disgusting that is to me shows how behind we are with LGBT stuff that that clarification is needed. For people to understand to how vile this suggestion even is. Um, also, when they say let the parents decide, that sounds nice to a lot of conservative people, but I think a lot of conservative people do not understand how much some parents suck at parenting and making decisions for the children, and specifically because. I think they suck as parents, a lot of them. And that's why they don't understand, okay? We don't let parents decide whether or not uh, children can learn English or math or science. Like, there is, like, it's illegal for a parent to tell the school that, you know what? I want my kids not to learn math. It's against my beliefs. I don't think they need that. You don't let the parents do that. It's forced by law that your kids need to learn that. So once we have established that that is allowed, that there's certain amount of knowledge and skills that the government gets to decide that your children need to learn, because you don't own your children. Unlike what many conservatives think, 
the parents don't actually own their children. You are the guardians of the children. You're not their owners. The children are citizens of a country and the government has some responsibility to make sure they are they are equipped with a certain level of skill set and knowledge for them to be able to um, function uh, in, in society. And you as a parent can get them in, in the way of that J- just because they came out of you, just because a, a child came out of your body, that doesn't mean you get to deny them certain uh, the level of knowledge and skill set that they ha- they need that experts have decided that they need because you're biologically somehow connected to them so that that makes no sense in fact because they're children because they're citizens that cannot defend themselves they require the government to get involved if you are being a crappy parent especially if you're becoming being a crappy parent so yeah um yeah so you it makes complete sense. I, I completely support this. Do you have any views on this? Do you agree with what I'm saying? I I think it's important. Like I was just looking on Amazon at, to, to see previews of these children's books. So they are like illustrative children's books. And one of them is about a dog that goes to a pride parade. And like, as he's at the pride parade, he's like also teaching the alphabet. <laughs> and then the other one is That's about adorable. a transgender girl who her mom helps her make like a a a wig a rainbow wig because she wants to have long hair see we need that that should be required because we don't want you to make your kid into a goddamn bucket right we want your kid to be able to tolerate other children for a healthier society so that is required to have a healthier society and more importantly than that we don't want your trans or gay kid to feel disgusted to feel shame to feel less than other kids because of your ideology we don't care that you are the parent. You don't get to abuse your child with shame just because they are your kid. We want to teach them in school that they are okay the way they are. That is what the, what is required. How I, I do understand that some progressives and some schools take this way too far and expose kids to things that the kids should not be exposed to i completely understand but you also have to understand yes that is not okay those should be found and should be shut down however you have to understand that those cases are used by conservatives to try to dismiss the entirety the utility of this program of these kinds of teachings Having a little puppy, having having a kid's book that shows, hey, look, two male penguins are raising an egg for you to normalize a family that has two fathers. And also that just teach them about not, nature. Like that is just genuinely nature, yeah. something that happens in nature. <laughs> yeah, that's adorable. Having two prince, two prince uh, in a story, two princesses or two princes in a story fall in love with each other and have a journey with each other right that is harmless and adorable and teaches and normalizes this kind of this this type of relationship okay that is you cannot dismiss that the utility of that if all of a sudden somewhere i don't know they have somebody that comes to a class and just shows like i, I can't things that i can't even say on youtube to children okay shut that down don't shut the rest of this down does that make sense yeah i think that makes sense yeah yeah i think yeah. Um, as much as there are like excesses within the LGBT movement, especially lately, um, people need to understand that, yeah, there might be excesses or things that are inappropriate in, uh, that I, I, as a member of the LGBT community, I do not even stand behind or excuse or justify or defend. Um, on the other side, there are people that want us chemically castrated or dead. So... (laughs) Right, right, right. Exactly. Those are one of them is bad. One of them is genocidal. Um, exactly. And I'm not saying I'm not uh, going to be one of those people that says that everyone that throws up a red flag for something that's a little weird is one of those people. I'm not that no. delusional. I'm not going yes. to paint everyone with that broad brush. Right. Yeah. 
I'm, but yes. I think everyone can understand the difficult position it puts me in particular in as an LGBT person that grew up in a family that wasn't accepting, that grew up in a family that would not allow me to have information like this. When I'm like, no, this is important. This would have made a huge difference in my life when I was growing up. Mm. Like, cause if you're, right. if the parents don't educate their children about this, the world will, and it won't be in a way that's appropriate. They'll be exposed or they'll go seek out information in ways that are not appropriate whatsoever. So right. you might not like it, but this is ultimately less harmful. Right. So uh, we got a super chat from Sid. Sid is asking, what do you, thank you so much for the super chat, Sid. Sid is asking, what do you think about groups like LGBT for Palestine? Are these people not aware what will happen to them in a hypothetical Palestinian state? No. I mean, I understand, but uh, that's I don't the think whole they are. Though. Wait, why, why would that be an issue? Isn't that the point of having a group like LGBT for Palestine to try to fight against that no, hypothetical? No, no, no. He's referring to LGBT and people in the queer community that are super anti-Israel, that are super pro-Palestine in a very uncritical way, not being oh, aware okay. of the attitudes oh, towards the LGBT community by most Palestinians living in Gaza and the West Bank. Okay, I'm saying I most, thought you're all. talking. Let me be clear, but let's be honest about these opinions. <laughs> okay, I thought you're talking about people who are saying we want LGBT for Palestine, like we want LGBT rights in Palestine. I thought that's Based. the group you're saying. No, no, people the were, opposite. that would be amazing. That would be like we we need we need like a group that is like we need LGBT rights in Palestine. That would be amazing. There are people thing. like that, so, no, but that's not what he's talking. Yes, there. Yeah, yeah. So he's talking about people who are LGBT and support Palestine. Okay. To be fair, Susie, I want to, um, as much as you're right about these people probably don't understand how anti LGBT most Palestinians are, I am, it's okay to be pro Palestine. I am pro Palestine. I am pro Palestine and I am pro Israel. Okay. Pro Palestine. You're so Zionist and you're like, I'm pro Palestine. It's just, it's funny to me. I know that it would, I, I, mean, I know your position, but other people are like, what I'm are pro every, about? I'm pro every country. Okay. Why I am pro every country because they, there are people who live there. I want the best for every country, including Palestine and Israel. Like, um, I don't, if I am, if I am, anti Hamas, if I'm anti religious extremism, if I'm anti this idiots in Palestine that are making Palestinian lives miserable, is because I am for Palestine, because this is what, you know, for example, when we criticize things that are happening in India, it's because we are pro India. If we're criticizing bad things that are happening in Pakistan, it could, because we are pro Pakistan. If we highlight all this ins insanity that is happening in, in pa Palestine with people with really extreme views is because we want Palestine to be a better place for Palestinians. So don't be anti-Palestine because you want to support Israel. In fact, be for Palestine because you want to support Israel. A better Palestine is a Palestine that is less harmful to Israel. A better Israel is, a, is an Israel. Be pro-Israel because you're for Palestine. A better Israel is an Israel that can support the economy of Palestine, have trade with Palestine. Um, anyways, so being for Palestine is also in the best interest of Israel. And being pro-Israel is at the same time in the best interest of Palestine. So that was my response to that super chat. Um, and also... Um, no, but the, the question is really uh, getting uh, at, isn't there yes. a hypocrisy with LGBT yes. people supporting yes. Palestine or like how, to what extent I, are they actually aware of how I agree with that viewed and treated? No, no. That's why I agreed with that. I just wanted to be like, yes, I understand the hypocrisy and the lack of awareness there. However, I also wanted to use it as an opportunity to say there's nothing wrong with being pro-Palestine. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. I just, yeah. of course. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Um, okay, and Sid is saying if Palestine does become a country, it should only be allowed if it will be a secular democracy. Not, not a good idea to have a, a, a Taliban like Palestine. Um, well, there's, there's so much. There's so much. I, I I'm not gonna open that can of worms. Okay, but I, I just want to say that I don't see 
how that's going to happen right now. Okay, there's, there, unfortunately, this two-state solution seems to be completely blocked because of Israel, unfortunately, because of all the settlement, because of all the in, illegal settlements of Israel in the West Bank. This seems like the two-state solution seems to be almost impossible right now. So there's that. Um, oh, okay. And another uh, reincarnation entertainment. Thank you for the super chat saying, are you guys open to borders? Uh, guys open. Oh, are you guys open borders? Or in favor of open borders, Are you? I think you're saying. People could escape hardship more easily. And how can you harm someone for going from one piece of land to another um okay i'm, I'm in favor of i used to be i used to be um, yeah freaking anarchist that's for <laughs> they wanted uh, to I, abolish I, all borders it's insane yeah no i'm i'm in favor of borders being more open but not to be eliminated i'm i'm in favor of people being able to cr people and products and services to be able to cross uh, cross borders with less taxes and less barriers okay that's what i'm in favor of but borders have utility you cannot manage the world without without um, borders so i am in favor of having borders but also easier way for goods and people to cross them yeah. um okay we we need also, we need security <laughs> we need yeah. to have security against the people we, that would harm us and and management and management. I mean, you, mm -hmm. if even if you want to manage a, a city, you you cut them into pieces into sections, and you know. So you have to have you you need to for better management. You people need rep know know who represents them, and different areas require people to choose their own representative. So that's why you need to mm -hmm. cross the. You but know, I I I don't want people to have to risk their own lives in the way that they do on a daily basis. Millions of people every single day risking right. life and limb to try to just seek refuge. I also find that unacceptable. Yes. And I, I've seen firsthand, you know, the links and people go to and see how some people I really love are really, really harmed by that. But we can't get rid yes. of, we can't but, abolish all borders. But even in an, in an, in, even in a, a hypothetical idealistic world where we don't have any security issues and people, we don't have terrorists and people are not killing each other, we will still need borders. Okay. Because you need to section off the land and be like, okay, you manage this part. We manage this part. The people around this area will choose who's managing this part. And people around this area will choose who's managing this part. We will always need borders. Okay. It's much more efficient. Uh, Yes. Okay. This comment um, also, made me laugh so hard. It was about me talking really, about your clapping. <laughs> Nicholas is saying yeah. she don't like chop. <laughs> she don't like top G clapping that way. She want you to do it more feminine. You know what? Yes. You're right, King. You clap how you want to <laughs> clap. Okay. Don't let me <laughs> feminize you into some soy boy. <laughs> <laughs> What if I what if I want to get in touch with my feminine side with the clapping? I don't know. I want to be. Okay, let's, I want to I want, be. now I want to see your most feminine clap. <laughs> no, oh, suddenly he doesn't want to. Uh. <laughs> you immediately got shy. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> He's like, actually, never mind. Okay. I like my manly clapping. Actually, clap. Thank um, you very much. I I I, I want to be manly. <laughs> Saying that in the most feminine way possible. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I want to be man. I like to be manly. I like to be a man. <laughs> um, All right. Let's go to the next segment. Uh, now, this is something we 100% cannot clap for. And oh. this is just mental preparation. The worst story that we're going to cover this week. But it is really important for us to talk about. So just heads okay, up. Okay. All okay. Right. Next news. Next news, the Taliban's dark reign, the alarming surge in female suicides in Afghanistan. The takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban in 2001, excuse me, 2021, has led to a significant surge in female suicides, highlighting the desperation among Afghan women to escape a regime that severely curtailed their rights and freedom. Though global trends show more men than women die by suicide, data from 11 surveyed provinces. You got, you got disconnected for me for a couple of seconds. I don't know if it was for the other people as well, but just in case, can you go back a little bit because I didn't hear you said curtail. Go. Oh, um, uh, 
This highlights the desperation among Afghan women to escape a regime that severely curtails their rights and freedoms. Although global trends show more men than women die by suicide, data from 11 surveyed provinces in Afghanistan collected privately by health workers and published despite a Taliban ban on sharing up-to-date statistics reveals that more women than men have died by suicide or have attempted to take their own lives. This alarming trend is attributed to the Taliban's repressive restrictions on women, increasing forced and underage marriages, and the loss of freedom and hope. While nearly half of the Afghan population already suffered psychological distress due to the country's long history of poverty and conflict, the situation has become particularly acute for women, as evidenced by the fact that in Herat province, a provincial hospital reported about 90% of mental health admissions were, quote, breaking down under the weight of the new restrictions, according to a medic working there. This surge in female suicides has raised concern among human rights activists and UN officials who blame the Taliban's increasing restrictions on women, women in public life. So I don't know. I, I really wanted to highlight this story because I think this is a cost to these restrictions and impingements that is a little bit more hidden you know, it's it's not as visible. It's it's something that isn't like directly considered when we hear about all these bans that come down and restrictions by the Taliban, but it's equally important. And in the article that I read by the Guardian and their researchers and who they were talking to basically talked about how they think that the numbers are already probably much more higher than what they have found so far because according to them in afghan culture suicide is seen as extremely extremely taboo it's it's seen as un-islamic so if they actually admit that it was a suicide it's probably only because they need to clarify that this happened so that they don't get accused of murder so there's probably a lot more that aren't even known about and um, it's just, it's, it's, it's really, really heartbreaking. The article profiled one particular story of a girl who she was in like the, the hospital when she was interviewed, obviously with a fake name, saying that she attempted because she was being forced into a marriage with her own cousin who is a heroin addict. And she has no recourse, zero recourse. And if the cousin comes back and tries to claim his right to marry her, she'll do it again. And, um, well, before I go into more detail, Armin, like, just what's your impression of this? I hate that the first thing that came across my mind was um, these Muslim Dawah channels constantly trying to use suicide rates and um, more secular countries as a way to suggest that they that look what atheism and secularism gets you, right? And these are Daniel Hanraju, for example, is a specifically a Muslim YouTuber who defends uh, the Taliban and and constantly use suicide rates in you know Western European countries, for example, to show how Islam is superior. But which is which is strange. This is a very strange case because usually you have higher suicide rates in countries that are more advanced. Not, be, not because, uh, because, because, not because they're having people in more advanced countries are living worse lives. Because in general, um, suicide is such a small percentage of a country's problems that they are doing so well in so many other things that even if they have higher suicide rates, on average, they are living much better lives. Like this. Oh, that's be a really a good point. Dent. I never considered it like that. Yeah, yeah, because if you look at um, you know people's health, people's mental health, all these other things, they're all doing these secular countries are doing so much better in so many other things, and suicide is such a small fraction of the entire problem that the country is dealing with. That even if they're doing so much worse than less developed countries overall, that, that doesn't mean that that people are living worse lives there in those countries. But this is bizarre because um, Afghanistan is now being hit. Uh, from both directions like it's 
um, it's having it's living people are having much lower uh, qu- uh, standard of life like much uh, lower quality of life uh, in every aspect in food in education in freedom in everything in access to health um, in access to entertainment and they don't even have that advantage of having lower suicide rates uh, like other less developed countries have so it, it just seems like hell on earth basically afghanistan seems like the taliban are very committed to making sure that, that afghanistan is the worst place to live especially for women they are very committed to making that happen that's what it seems like yeah man i don't know and the arguments about the lowered suicide rates in these other countries i i question the statistics i question how much we actually know about those things. Well, I've read some on it, and there are some experts that suggest that when life gets to a higher standard of living, then you start thinking about certain things more. Do you know what I mean? Like when you are, it, it, and again, it's such a small fraction that you shouldn't be like, oh, so should, we shouldn't have a higher standard of living. This is a very tiny sac- fraction of the problem. But once you have ba- your basic needs met, then your mind starts to wonder about things that it wasn't capable of having the time and energy to think about if you were struggling to live. And that's what causes might might again this is a theory might such a um, provide a reason for why that happens like if you start sitting down and thinking about how alone you are or how much especially if you don't have anything to blame because if the country situation is horrible then you could be angry at something rather than faulting your own for your own problems Mm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that makes people sort of sad and depressed about something but again these are all theories that people throw around none of this has been proven but especially especially here's another thing if a country's situation is bad and it has never experienced a better situation it's less likely for that country to experience suicide higher suicide rates because they have never experienced anything better right but if a country's situation is bad but they have experienced better conditions then because they have something to compare they had hopes and dreams and those hopes and dreams have now been crushed then you could see a higher suicide rates so for example if you compare um afghanistan to another Af- to an african country for example that is the same level of poverty and lack of access to education and healthcare and all of that you can you might see higher suicide rates in afghanistan because they were given a chance for a better future for women, for education, for prosperity. And they were seeing that opportunity. And now that all of those dreams are part of, yeah. So, and now those dreams and opportunities have been taken away from them. So you might not see higher suicide rates in that African country because they weren't provided that opportunity. And you see that in, in Afghanistan because there was, a, there was a glimpse, there was a hope, there was like, this is, you know, do you understand? the difference here what i'm trying to say yeah afghanistan no had the opportunity to get there yeah yeah mm. reincarnation entertainment thank you for the super chat saying afghan women should seek refuge in the uk let them in this sort of thing is why i was talking about open borders even if we can't have 100 percent open okay well first of all there are many countries that did have special refugee programs specifically to help afghans in particular canada had i think the largest in the world openly said that they're reserving 40,000 spots just for Afghans. Um, So there are many countries that do have programs to do this kind of thing. I don't specifically know about the UK. Second, I'm sure that there are millions of women and girls and men that would love to seek refuge in the UK from Afghanistan. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where to begin with articulating the obstacles and doing it. So yeah, they should, they should, they should seek refuge there. I'm sure they would love it. I, I'm sure that it, although it would be very difficult, many would still feel very blessed to have the opportunity to like achieve and accomplish that journey, right? It's not that simple. Um, it, yeah, it, it's, 
it it is extremely difficult it it takes the work of teams of people just to bring one person in and make sure that they're allowed to stay um so i i, I would i would love it if that was an easy option for the people that want it but it's not right it's not it's not that simple and, um, so just i and i'm saying that because like I don't know for people that aren't involved in refugee work and case management and have been familiar with cases and doing hands-on work the way I have, I don't know if the average person is aware of what goes into it. I don't blame them if they're not, you know, or, or what's really involved in the risks that are involved. Um, it's, it's right. not as simple and people like sometimes criticize people for the way that they have to seek refuge or the, the things that they have to do. This is not a, a, a black and white like good world people have to do things that, to survive that they wouldn't have to do i don't i don't know i'm going on a tangent now but yeah so i I, I just want to say i am in favor of more refugees being allowed okay but i don't but it needs to be there needs to be filters there needs to be strict filters people need to be checked i'm not okay with open borders at all you know more refugees are is good but more filters is also a good thing you need to make sure also if you don't have proper filters then you are risking of shutting down these refugee programs because people are going to have bad experiences in the in the accepting countries and they're going to challenge the entirety of the program so you need to make sure you are doing the proper checks to, to when you allow somebody in um i'd be lying also, if i said that there weren't a lot of people that lied on their refugee claims there are a lot right. of people that lie that are there are a lot of people that should not be allowed to stay in these countries and they do through legal loopholes or their their horrific past is only discovered long after they were already granted status and it gets complicated so there's a lot of it's the system is messy it's not i don't know how to put it yeah the reality also, is newman is dark. newman is using this we need to move on susie and uh, newman is using the super chat saying please like the stream guys yes thank you thank you newman for using your super chat to tell people that um zayd is saying armin can you say uwu should i do an uwu are, are you gonna do an uwu i would love to see you do an uwu i could i could do an uwu here oh, uwu. Wait. Uwu. Is that <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like that. <laughs> I feel so traumatized right now. Well, I could do the Vladimir version. Have you seen Vladimir, a YouTuber? Oh, like a manly version. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard Wait, that? Is like... he the guy that is like dresses like an e-girl and then tricks guys into thinking that he's a guy? Yeah, a and it goes from being feminine. Yeah, he goes from being feminine to being very masculine. I love Vladimir. He's the best. He goes, he goes like, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh my God. When you uh, did that, yeah. I felt something inside of myself like rescind. I felt something like invert inside of myself. I was like, oh. I know, I know you hate that. I know you hate that, but I had to do it. <laughs> oh, okay. So we got another super chat. We will read it after the next news. Thank you so much, Reincarnation Entertainment. Well, no, for let, the let's next, let's uh, read it this news because we were just discussing it. Oh. It'll make more sense. Oh, okay, you read you read it then. Thank you for another super chat saying, yeah, you can't allow terrorists in. I'm not open borders anymore. You changed my mind. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But we should allow oh, wow. a lot more like the stream yes. guys. Yes. Everyone like the stream. And I would Thank also you. love to see more people who are deserving be allowed to have safety and security in their life. Thank you for it's the really five horrible when chat. people who really need it are denied that opportunity yes okay can we clap for the next news um i mean in comparison to our last news it's yeah it's not that bad so let's clap okay next news next news nigeria's war on homosexuality 67 arrested at a gay wedding in a massive crackdown on homosexuality, Nigerian authorities arrested 67 people attending a gay wedding, marking one of the largest 
of such arrests in a country where homosexuality is outlawed. The police spokesperson, uh, Bright Idahe, Idafe, emphasized that homosexuality will, quote unquote, never be tolerated in Nigeria. And despite initially arresting 200 people, 67 were detained after investigation. Adafe uh, highlighted that Nigeria cannot emulate the Western world due to cultural differences and noted that the suspects would be charged after the investigation concludes. This incident underscores the ongoing persecution faced by the LGBT community in Nigeria, where the 2013 Same-Sex Marriage Prohibition Act criminalized gay marriages and homosexuality despite condemnation from some Nigerians and the international community. This is crazy. They arrested 200 people. And then they and then they were like and then they just detained. They actually went the the ish, the further step of detaining 67 just for attending a gay wedding first of all doing a gay wedding in nigeria sounds pretty brave but uh just for attending just for attending the wedding yeah 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 yeah. they weren't doing even any okay is that is that on their books like is that just arresting people are they ignoring their own laws is there is there is there something on their legal code that says like you cannot attend a gay wedding or they just not that i'm aware of yeah okay so they're just like it, their laws means nothing to themselves they just go like oh this sounds gay let's just go and arrest everybody 200 amazing this is so sad by the way nigeria has so many guys again remember religion poisons everything including progress right Nigeria is has a country with is a country with so much potential, so much potential. And the number one thing that is holding Nigeria back is religion, which is unfortunate because Nigeria has so much potential that it could lift the entire economy of Africa with it and all its neighbors with it. That's how that's how big of a force Nigeria is in Africa, right? And Nigeria it could save like is is a major part of the world's economy if it if it's allowed to uh, progress because it has so much untapped it has such a young population that the world needs right now so and an eager young population for growth and all of this with uh, this religious mumbo jumbo with an insecure with all the insecurity and this r- legal standards that just is unreliable for investors when you have a legal system like that. But anyways, um, what um, is saying? I want that atheist republic shirt. Yes, I am wearing no. an atheist republic shirt, guys. We have merchandise. Yeah. If you did not know, we Link. got merch. Link is in the description. Okay, freaking yes. show off that flair. Show your support. Show that you're part of the AR army, the AR militia. No I'm kidding. <laughs> Speaking of. Growing the AR army, we are on the road to 40k. So if you are watching this and you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe because right. we are growing our movement to show international solidarity for a secular movement. And you got to join, and you join by subscribing to the channel and liking the stream. Right. Oh, in reincarnation entertainment said that he got the AR shirt. Hell yeah! Oh, thank you. We match. Is it the same kind or is it a different one? <laughs> <laughs> um, we just got a major, major super chat from Sid. Do you want to highlight that? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sid, thank you. This is crazy. $50 super chat from Sid. Thank you. Holy yeah. cow. Sid, thank you. Um, I think he's talking about, okay. Uh, I suggest a filter. Restrict immigration from nations that criminalize LGB are dictatorships and theocracies. If you have to allow, force them to go undergo multi-year orientation program like volunteer for LGBT Jewish orgs and draw a cartoon of their God. Okay, well, people shouldn't be forced to draw cartoons of their God if they do not want to. That's Mm. insane. Um, I don't like the idea of criminalizing immigration from nations or restricting unduly restricting immigration from nations that criminalize LGBT people because that 
makes it more difficult for the people who are leaving because they don't like these kinds of policies or maybe they even are LGBT themselves to come. Like, yeah, why I mean, should Armin, should be accepting why should Armin, yeah. who is one of the strongest supporters of th these people, this movement, better at articulating it than most people who grew up in the West, have a more difficult time to become a member of a society that would protect his free expression to then go about and promote those values than someone that came from, I don't know, like Japan or something. That's, that's ridiculous. I do think that yeah. there should be screening based on these values. There are a lot of people that do need to have better assimilation. They do need to have better integration. I wouldn't question that. But this blanket approach is not going to be useful. Some of the strongest fighters for these causes come from these places specifically because they've seen firsthand how terrible it is. So I, I disagree. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you want more immigration for countries that criminalize LGBT or and, and dictatorships because the people there kind of need to get out more? Like, isn't that shouldn't it be the other way around? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that would, and also as D is mentioning, that would be that would that is punishing people for their governments. Yeah, exactly. Like, why are people responsible? Why are they being having to pay the price for what their governments are doing? So that makes. No sense. I am I am okay with I mean here's the here's a problem. I'm okay with having orientation programs, not mm -hmm. that one, not ones that make people draw their cartoons of God. That that that's like those so that's government getting involved with, with people's personal belief, which is anti-secularism. So you are trying to fight um people who are coming from non-secular countries by making your government non-secular because your government is now taking it being involved in people's religious beliefs that is that violates secularism so i don't think that, that makes any sense um but orientation programs might seem like a good idea however it will make the whole process a lot more expensive so just no note no, that that's like and you and you have to understand the countries require you cannot have orientation program for some people and not for others it has to be from every country, like even some, if you are introducing an orientation program, it has to be the same from people that are coming from Japan or Norway or anywhere else. And if you do that, you have to understand that these countries like Western European countries or North American countries are now desperate for a young workforce. And they are spending already a ton of money that they don't have on trying to attract a younger workforce to their countries. And this will just make it a lot more unaffordable to them if you do that. So there's a, it's not easy mm -hmm. to do all of these things. Yeah. yeah. Um, Zeta's bringing up a good point. Firsthand experience. He's like, how are you, am I supposed to escape if you make it more difficult? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, uh, Newman with the super chat. Do you want to read this one? Yes. He said, can you make a full sleeve t-shirt, please? Okay. So I, we should have them available. I know we have hoodies available. I know, so we we do our merch through Spreadshop slash Spreadshirt primarily. And what they do is you should have options to put different designs on different kinds of merchandise. So um, right. I think they have that option. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, we should be able to, we have, we have merch on our YouTube channel now, I think. We should be able to just add, oh yeah, we do. Hmm. So we have to, can somebody, we should spend time on trying to put our merch on our YouTube videos. We now, YouTube just recently gave us that option. Just oh, like instead we have of on it just Persian being channel. featured on the channel, it can also be featured on videos? No, it, it would be part of, it would be something, we have YouTube merch now, so people don't have to click a link on the description. It will just be on our YouTube channels, our merch, if we, if we set it up, we have that option. So we have oh, to take cool. advantage of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So please, like, remind me to get that done at some point. But guys, <laughs> my hands are so... We Newman. need volunteers. There's so many things. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, Newman with a very ominous super chat saying, resistance is futile, you will be assimilated. <laughs> Wait, isn't that from Doctor Who? Isn't that a line from Doctor Who? Like with those... Yeah, I think that's a line from Doctor Who. Really? With the Dalits or something? Yes, I think so. 
I don't know. Yeah. Let me know if that, if I'm right. I don't know. I don't know my stuff. Yeah. Uh, no. So Newman is saying no. Okay. Um, okay. So can we uh, clap for the next news? Yeah. Oh no! It's Star Trek. It's Star Trek. It's the Borgs from Star Trek. So I I don't know. I don't know my. I knew it was from some nerdy stuff. I didn't know which one. God, I'm gonna get a little hate. Oh yeah, Star Trek. I knew this. that you were a nerd, just not what kind. <laughs> <laughs> He's crying. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, can we clap? Clap for the next thing. Oh, yes. it looked like it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Like, where the critical is like uncultured, <laughs> <laughs> uncultured okay, swine. <laughs> we're just self reported as uncultured. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. All right. Um, next news. Next news New York City mosques now allowed to broadcast call to prayer without permit. In a move that prioritizes one religion over others, and blurs the line between church and state, New York City Mayor a Eric Adams recently announced that mosques will no longer need a permit to publicly broadcast the Azan, or the Muslim call to prayer, on Fridays and during Ramadan. While Adams claims that this will foster inclusivity, it raises concerns about the separation between church and state and the principle a principle that Adams has previously publicly dismissed, saying state is the body, church is the heart. You take the heart out of the body, the body dies. This decision not only sets a dangerous precedent, but disrupts the delicate balance between religious freedoms in a city home to a diverse array of faiths. As Afaf Nasher, executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE for short, New York's chapter, stated, quote, the sound of the azan is not just a call to prayer. It's a call to unity, reflection, and community. It's important to question if this move truly promotes unity and community for all New Yorkers, regardless of their faiths or beliefs. So, Armin, what do you think about this? They're only what? allowed to okay, play I the... Azan at 10 decibels louder than the ambient noise levels. How is it a call for unity? Can some, what? It's literally saying Allahu Akbar, it, which means oh my God is greater. Great. It's not Allah. It's Allahu Akbar, by the way. It doesn't mean God is great. Do you know what it actually means? It means God is greater. Yeah, exactly. You know, greater, you know, do you know what greater than what? Than your Every God. Yeah, exactly. Everything it, else. It, yeah, it's like, it's, my God is, Allahu Akbar is not a call for unity. It's the actual opposite. Allahu Akbar is like, my God is bigger, bigger than your God. That's what it literally means. How is it a call? You... The, the call to prayer was a way for Muslims to know if they should attack a city or not, to see if they're calling at Islamic, is, it, is, is this an Islamic city or not? When has it ever been a call for unity? It was playing an Adhan in a city for the first time was a sign that this city has been invaded by Muslim and now this is Islamic land. When has it ever in history the Azan been a, a sign of unity? What are they talking about? How is it? How they? How? How are they? How do they? Def, how, what? What? What is their <laughs> argument for this being unity? Well, this is an example of what I personally dub like, basically multiculturalism dogma, or like uncritical inclusivity, toxic multiculturalism. Like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very uncritical. So the idea is, is that, okay, as D is pointing out in our live chat, only 9% of New York City is Muslim, but it's, you know, in, 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 in it's, it's, it's a belief that comes out of a spirit that I have sympathy towards, which is like, Hey, we want these people to be included within our city, their life. We want them to feel like they belong here and that they should be welcomed uh, just because they're a minority, like we care about pluralism and they should, you know, 
be allowed to express themselves and blah, 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 blah. Um, but it's, again, it's, it, that, which is a good spirit. You know, I appreciate that sentiment, but it's, again, like I said, very uncritical, um, because it's not conscious or aware of all the things that you just mentioned. And, um, it's not taking into consideration the quality of life for all the other people that live in that environment who probably don't want to hear that necessarily. Like I have friends who have lived next to mosques and it sounds like (laughs) just hearing the call to prayer constantly would drive me insane. Um, especially when they like send me videos of what it sounds like at like five in the morning, I would have lost my mind so long ago. Um, but yeah, Armin, that because you're like, oh, what are they thinking? Well, that that that's the spirit of it. It's like, oh, we're we have many different people living here. We want them to be included, and this is how we think that we should include them. So, what do you think about that? Okay, uh, can you, uh, now the more important part I want to ask: How is this not anti secular? What? Why this is a religious privilege, right? Why are mm-hmm. other, why are is do other religions get to do this? Or is well, it I just... mean, they're church bells. Okay. And there are definitely church, church bells, bells and cathedrals all around New York City, and that's allowed. Yeah, I'm. I don't know because this this whole thing, this new announcement, is that they can do this without a permit. They they were previously allowed to do it, but they had to be permitted. And now that they, they they've revoked the need for a permit, I don't know mm. what the permitting situation is on churches. Right, but and what about, I think uh, churches are different though because it's it's not saying it's it's the sound of bells. Mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. my God is greater than yours. There's a difference between those yeah. two things. I mean, would I be able to from a have a building that is broadcasting with the same volume that your God sucks message? Would I be able to do that? I mean, I'm okay with this if I if I get to do that if I if I get to do the same thing with that. As long as they don't have a privilege, oh I just I'm yeah, just I don't I'm just asking for cons- that. I'm yeah, just would you also be consensus. allowed to do that without a permit? Under what circumstances yeah, I, okay. would you be allowed to do all that? All I'm asking permit? for, all I'm asking for, is consistency. Okay, if they can broadcast with that volume, that my God is greater. Okay, I should be able to have without permit have a building that broadcasts that Allah sucks. Okay, I should be able to do that. Okay, if I if I would be okay with this law, if it's allowed to do the same thing, if we're allowed to do the same thing, again. But I, maybe it's all or none. Okay, if and I think none is better because then if everybody is allowed to just broadcast their messages from their buildings, I think that that would be a lot of noise pollution, and we want to reduce noise pollution. So I think going York with none. So noisy. Yeah, I think going with none, if I had to choose between all or none, I would choose none. None of it should be allowed. But if you're allowing some of it, then be consistent and allow all of it, at least. Mm-hmm. The worst is the worst is privilege. The worst is if there is religious privilege. That's the worst um, outcome, if that's, uh, that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So... Let's read the super chats. Do you want to read the super chats? First of all, thank you for the super chats. Uh, Animation gave us 100 rupees. Thank you. Saying, if Allahu Akbar is exclusionary, how does one navigate in a multicultural celebration such as in India? I'm not sure if I entirely understand this question. Let me read. If like, Allahu Akbar is I feel like is I need that... more context. Um, I mean... You could be multicultural and be sometimes exclusive. You should be allowed to be exclusive sometimes. You know what I mean? You should be allowed to be like, you know what? We have a temple celebration and only Buddhists can allow, are allowed in this one. Okay? I think I don't like that, but I think that should be allowed. That should not be legal. What it do you depends. Think? It depends. Yeah. It really depends. Because that could also lead to situations of severe caste discrimination. Right, you know what? You know what? To situations of severe gender-based discrimination. 
Yeah. It's really you know tricky. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because imagine if you said that about a Christian, people in the United States or Canada would completely understand, like, oh, this is a Christian-only event. And we're like, okay, this is religious supremacy. You should not. Yeah. I mean, I don't like it at all. I just don't like too much government involvement. That's what yeah, I'm exactly. That, I don't know. I have to think. That's really the question. That's really the balance. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. But I feel like I wasn't fully understanding that question, so I can't yeah, me neither. really answer. Yeah. yeah. I just answered my own, what I was thinking myself. All right. So here's another question. You want to read this one? Oh, we got another super chat. Um, it's saying. Okay. It's, uh prosh gave us a super chat thank you saying islam is no different than uh yahtzeeism as i will call it for youtube ideas expressed in uh again i don't want to say this for youtube i will say my dream minecraft in minecraft <laughs> ideas expressed in minecraft that's how you say that uh people can't say it because it was born 1400 years ago and has billions of adherents well Actually, Roman, I, I don't believe I believe this. that you think that Islam is actually worse than Yahtzeeism, right? Yeah, this is this is not correct. Islam is is far worse, far worse than Yahtzeeism. I mean, just if you just uh, compare the Quran to Minecraft, you will see that I'm correct about that. Yeah, we hate yeah. Minecraft here, by the way. Yeah, so it's disgusting, <laughs> but the Quran is worse. Okay. Um. um well, do you want to it articulate why you think it's worse? I think that's important. That will take. Well, well, that will take a lot. Okay, I will give. I will give okay. the the gist of why you think it's worse. You think it's worse because Yahtzeeism in Minecraft is so bad that it basically burns out very, very quickly. Versus, there are enough good things within Islam that continue the meme for longer, ultimately causing more harm in the long term. It's, is that? Fair to say. I wouldn't say there's good thing. I wouldn't say good good thing. I'm saying like it's too obviously evil. It's too on the nose with how evil it is. Like I would say the the Quranic message is more evil actually, and the mess the good parts of it is not actually good. It just seemed good, but it's like it has enough, you know, rainbows and butterflies to just be able to cover up the evilness inside it's it ha it's better at propaganda and that's why it lasts longer and it has more victims basically yeah okay there we go i just thought it was important yeah. to outline why you believe that um okay, thank you Numan talking about <laughs> the issues with broadcasting the call to prayer he's saying my house is soundproof just because of that bs oh wow good job if this was in my neighborhood i would lose my if I like bought a, house, <laughs> a condo and neighborhood and then that was constructed after I bought my property and I was like locked into that space, I would be pissed. I'm going to the city council. <laughs> They're going to hear my complaint. Yeah, maybe um, Karen about it. Oh yeah. I'll go to the city council. I'm, I ain't afraid. I went to give comment <laughs> at city council actually yeah. this year. <laughs> it was for something completely <laughs> different though. It was actually okay. related to the Iran demonstrations. Um, nice. Prash gave us a 10 Canadian dollar super chat. Thank you, Prash. Saying, do you Thank think you. that Ilhan Omar and Rashida Talib are really liberal? They seem to follow an Islamist agenda and attack the GOP, Hindu nationalists, and Zionists, but are silent on Islamic radicals. Seems fake to me. Okay. They, they actually have been critical of bad practices among Islamic radicals before. Like, I remember there was a conversation with Ilhan Omar where she was basically expressing, they were talking, the interviewer was asking her about FGM or something. And Ilhan Omar was basically like, why do I need to come out and say that this is unacceptable every single time? Like, I've already stated this. Like, why do I have to keep repeating myself? Blah, blah, blah. Um, right. So they, they do take some stances against these kinds of things. Um, do I, I, what do you what by islamist agenda what do you specifically mean because that can mean a lot of different mm -hmm. things first of all but do i think they're really liberal well no but that's more about their progressivism and less about what you think is yeah. the Islamist agenda does that make sense right, they, like i don't think they're yes. really liberal but not for the reasons that you're saying <laughs> They're not liberal because they're progressives. Yes, exactly. And they're genuinely progressive. I do believe that they're genuinely progressive. Um, 
Um, and I, you have no idea how much, and, and, and I'm not defending everything these people say. They have a lot of views that I completely disagree with, right? Um, however, they are. I do believe that they're genuine about the views that they have, and they do get a lot of hate from Muslims for it. That you, they actually get the these people that you're mentioning. They get a more. They get attacked more by Muslim conservatives. That right and then right leaning Americans, the level of hate that comes at them is you have no idea. It's it's insane. It's insane. So yeah, but I do believe it's genuine. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So next comment. Oh yeah. Darui gave us seven Ooh. Canadian dollars. Thank you, Saint Armin. Thank watch you. the move, the Indian movie OMG and PK. I'll pay you to watch to react to it. I still have not seen PK, and I really want I, to see PK. But I don't think we can I, do that on YouTube. We'd get a copyright we strike to hell. We get we get copyright strike. But I have seen PK, and I love PK. I've I seen love some clips of it. It was hilarious. Just the, the yes. I, I don't like the ending of PK, to be fair. I think like it ended like trying to uh, fix. It attacked religion so much during the show. And I think at the very end, it had to do some damage control. Um, and I don't like the ending. But the rest of the movie was really, really good. I Given how good PK is, I'm, I'm assuming OMG would be that good. I hope so. But I will check that out if I have the time. I don't have the time, though. But I will try. I will try to check it out. Um, yeah, so but thank you, thank you for the recommendation. So, we got another super chat from Newman saying, I cannot complain about that. Trust me, I tried. Okay, so about I think the Azan um mm. sound. Okay, well, sorry about that. Good, good job making your house soundproof at least. Try to <laughs> get, yeah, try to get like some noise canceling headphones to help as well. That really helps. Um, also David with the two dollar can two Canadian dollar super chat saying, Do you think India will be a superpower? Yes, I do think so. I think it's not a matter of when India will become a superpower and economic superpowers, to be exact. I, well, there's multiple ways of becoming a superpower. I don't think India will become a military superpower, for example. I do think India will become an economic superpower. It's not a matter of uh if it's a matter of when, and I think that the religious, uh, the Hindutva element, the religious element, and the right-leaning ethno-nationalist element is slowing that down, it will slow that down. It, it will not be able to stop it becoming a superpower, but unfortunately, it's delaying the progress, which is a tragedy because every second that that delay every every second that that falls behind that we're talking about millions and millions of people's lives not progressing fast enough so it, it's a it's a huge given how big india is i think it's a, it should be considered a major crime to delay the the progress that india is ha is having and i think the religion and the conservatism and the ethno nationalistic elements are doing that yeah all right we did well. I think we did very well today, guys. I think we covered yeah, a, lot a lot of, of interesting fun. news. Yeah, and thank you again to Susanna and Dee for all the time and effort they do they put into bringing also, all Newman. of this Newman news. Is and part also, of our news team now. Newman too. I was I usually say and all the other people that we cannot name, but we can name Newman because Newman is here and we know Newman. So thank you so much to Newman as well, and all the other people who are spending time on the news and. We cannot name them for their own sake. So thank you. I mean, uh, me and Susie appreciate you guys. Um, and guys, if you want to help us and if you want to join the team and help us do the things that we do, because there's just too much, okay? And we got, there are so many other things we could do if we if our hands are not were not this full. So there's a link in the description. You could become a volunteer. Um, I check them once every couple of weeks and then because to, so i could get them done all, all at the same time if there's a little bit delay in me getting back to you please be patient i will get to all the volunteer applications okay i promise i will get to all of them so yeah link to the volunteer application uh, in the description anyways guys we're gonna head out and oh i have a um, guys come head over to the atheist experience channel because i'm gonna be hosting that uh okay. in a few hours yes oh, what yes. the hell 
Yes. Why didn't so we guys, plug this? What the hell? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Pull it up yes, right now. Man. I didn't. <laughs> yes, guys, come to the Atheist Experience, please, and come. And I'm going to be hosting the Athe- uh, I'm going to be a co-host in the Atheist Experience today. In let me see how many hours. Let me turn this off. Oh, in Ooh, three hours. Okay, nice. Gu- guys, in three hours, I will be hosting the Atheist Experience show. So please, please come today. And mention in the live chat that woohoo, Armin, Armin is here. So they they like it when you when you say that they will invite me more, okay? And leave and after the show is over, they also leave a comment there saying like, oh, Armin did a great job. They check the comments. That's the you guys leaving comments there on the atheist experience. That's the reason why they keep having me back. Okay, so please continue doing that. Thank you. Wait, 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 mm. wait. I need to I need to promo put, this. Oh, in. put the link in the. Yes. Put the let me put the link as well for you guys. Okay, one second. Um, That's so fun. I feel so silly. Like usually I'm so good about being on top of you doing this. And <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Okay. Guys, I put the link in the comment section uh, in the in the live chat. So go, come check it out um in three hours. Okay. Be yes, there. Let me pull it up. And I'll, I'll I'll see you in the live chat when you guys are when I notice Atheist Republic people are in the live chat, it makes me happy there. So what are you going to Oh, there. Boom. Wait, how do I put this away? There we go. Guys, three hours. Be there or be square. <laughs> <laughs> this photo of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's fun. Okay. Cool. I'll be in the live chat. Everyone, come hang out. Um. And before we leave, I just want to say thank you to our community. Thank you for showing up every week, making the live chat as fun as it is. It's because of you guys that everyone even wants to come and hang out with everyone. Um, It's kind of fun to like come every week and see the same people and catch up and just spend time together. So thank you guys for making our community what it is. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. We do this every week. Okay. So make sure to come back, share your opinions, comment. What was your favorite segment that we covered this week? What kind of news do you want me to pick for next week? And um, thank you for everyone who gave us super chats this week. That was also a lot of fun to get, to get more involved in these other issues. I enjoyed that. Yes. Yes. And also, Sina is saying, aye, aye, Captain. Thank you, Sina. And yes, and uh, guys, also like and subscribe and leave comments, as Susanna mentioned. And Newman is also giving us a super chat saying, I am coming for Forrest. Okay, okay, fine. That's, that's okay. That's, that's a lot. Forrest is great. I love Forrest is very knowledgeable. Sorry. Yeah. I like his content. Like that. All right, guys. See you next week. Uh, see you with Susanna next week. See you earlier with Secular Rarity. So, um, Subscribe for that as well. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.